What's up, everybody? It's Andrew Schultz. This week's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. With the help of Squarespace, tackling your next move might not be as difficult as it seems. Are you launching a new creative project, changing careers? Are you finally ready to be your own boss and start that business? Squarespace gives you the ability to create an online platform from which to make your next big idea known to the world. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter the offer code IDIOT to get 10% off your first purchase. Make your next move with Squarespace. Um, Charlemagne is not with us right now. He is in New York. I really do not know what he's doing, but uh, I wish him the best. I hope everything is good. A lot of people have been speculating if, if we broke up. Okay, yeah, well, that lead-in makes it sound like I know it does make it sound like that. But no, I'm in LA. I'm filming this show. Um, and uh, say that again. Stunt. Yeah, yeah, you know, I got to show off a little bit. Uh, so, and then Charlamagne was in LA for a little bit. He went back to New York, and then um, yeah, I think you know, I don't actually, I really don't know. I haven't really been in touch with him that much. But everything's good. It's just been busy. Oh, hey, LA, what's up? I'm out here. Um, I got a, a live show on February 21st at the Hollywood Improv. You can get tickets for that at theandrewschultz.com. Uh, make sure you get those tickets and uh, it's 8 p.m. show. Be there. We have a replacement for Charlemagne. We have a, a real live band, Muslim, <laughs> in the flesh, okay? <laughs> Amin El Hassan. You know, you guys, El Hassan. Yeah, El Hassan. Name right. Yeah, yeah but El Hassan is it's, better. Yeah, man. That's what Ellis Island would have done with you. That, that's probably what they would have done. Yeah. Ellis. Yeah, just Ellis. I mean Ellis. Wouldn't yeah. you? Wouldn't that be easier? Yeah, you know what? I, I do have an actual Anglicized name that I use. Go. Ali- Benjamin Goodman. What? Benjamin Goodman. But wait, why did you do that? Uh, well, usually, like when I go to Starbucks or whatever, you just I have, say I say ben, Ben's my name. So you go with a completely Jewish name? Yeah. Well, I mean, it helps a lot. How does How does the uh, How does How does Allah feel about that? Oh, he's all right. He's cool with that. Yeah, he's good. He, he's forgives. Yeah, man. We're all We're all together. I mean, you've been seeing the signs and all the marches. And stuff. I have. Yeah. We're all together in this. <laughs> Everybody's together. Okay. So, what's the deal? Can you go back to the Sudan or what? Uh, no. I mean, I can. I just yeah. then just uh, as long as I don't plan on coming back. Are you sure that that's the rule? I am sure that that's the rule. Because I looked it up and I've seen some some different things. What have you seen? Okay, so the executive order, which uh-huh. people are calling the Muslim ban, right? Um, I, from my understanding, you banning they're banning from seven different countries: it's okay. Iraq, Iran, Sudan, Somalia, Syria. Yemen, Syria, and uh, da, 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 another one. Say. You did I say Iran? Iran, Iraq, Syria. Sudan. Oh, Libya. Yemen, uh, Libya. There you Libya. Go. The other one. Um, and then my understanding was that if you had legal residence here, if you had a green card or if you were a dual citizen, right. that you could come back. Right. And this idea that, you know, these but people who it's, are. It's actually, it's, it's, first of all, it's, it's, it's a lot narrower. It's, you're either a U.S. citizen or you are a green card holder. Because you can be a legal resident. Like, I'm a legal resident. I'm not a green card holder. Oh, see, that's different. See. So you need to be vetted. I mean, again, it's one of those things. You need to be vetted. I need to be vetted. I'm on TV every day, but, you know, that's, I guess that's not vetting enough because yeah. they, they watch the Manchurian... We don't want you on TV for the wrong things. Yeah, they, they watch okay? the Manchurian Candidate way too many times. Like, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> so, basically, you have it. Oh, shit. So, basically, Amin is, like, deathly allergic to cats, and the cat is attacking him. Is there any way we could put the cat in uh, in another room or something like that? Um so chop over here. Yeah, I know. He like he literally stared you down and you backed yeah, he did. off. Like he yeah. walked right up to me. Yeah, that was that was Trump. That was a that was a Trump ass move. A white cat, by the way. It was a all all white cat went up to him, and stared at his eyes, and was like, "You shouldn't be here." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my understanding was, if you have a dual citizenship or a green card, right. you can travel. So you can travel, but even the green card holders. Mm-hmm. So, here's the crazy part. Yep. It's not being applied the same at every airport. So, so there have been stories of green card holders who have been either, mm-hmm. I'm not saying denied entry, but sure. detained. Well, they're uh, supposed to be. Delayed. There have been green card holders that have not been able to board flights from, from Europe. Right. They just stopped them right there. Well, that that's not a U.S. issue. That's a European issue. But, you know, it's again, it's it, they right. do it. They don't do it out of the goodness of their heart. They do it because they're sure. American Airlines or United or Delta right. are following what the executive orders of the country are. Well, there's a couple things with that. One, um, my understanding was that if you do have a green card or if you're a dual citizen, you have to be um, questioned. 
there was something about like, and fingerprinted. That's what it was. Right. So there was a questioning and a fingerprinting. Uh, apparently, this this which, which by the way, yeah, not for nothing. But when you get your green card, you already they already have your biometrics. You're already right. you're already in the system. Right. 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 So I, I don't know what getting in the system again does, but I mean, this is what happened with Obama, right after the uh, what is it, the uh, Kentucky. Was it the Kentucky or like the Kansas thing? Remember, there was like the two Iraqi guys right, right, that right. Uh, that they they were trying to do some uh, terror attack in Kentucky. I think, I think it was Kentucky. Yeah. It was Kentucky, right? And um, and basically, right after that, that's when or uh, that's when he ceased uh, letting refugees come in from Iraq for six months, right. uh, which is, isn't actually entirely true. A lot of people are saying, "Hey, Obama did this. Right. Why is everybody giving Trump a hard time?" Obama never stopped letting refugees right. in. About two thirds less refugees entered the country right. at the year after that. But what he did do is he vetted about fifty six thousand Iraqis that were right. in the United States that were uh, green card holders right. or on the refugee program. So what Trump is doing, Obama did in terms of vetting these people. But that's that's kind of like saying what uh, oh, what's a good what's a good example. It's kind of like saying what Jay Z did to Lance on Rivera is what. OJ did to Nicole Ron Simpson. How? Like, well, Jay Z stabbed Lance because he was leaking yeah. his, his album, and OJ stabbed Nicole. Same thing. Like, but, one is a lot more extreme than the other, is what I'm saying. How? Because one is an outright ban, and the other one is vetting and, and a kind of a curtailing. You, no, I'm only talking about. I'm not talking about the ban, I'm talking about vetting these people. Right. So the vetting process was the same for both. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, if, if Obama, I mean, I can't talk to an Iraqi citizen, but if there's right. anybody here who are listening, let us know. But sure. my understanding was if you're going to vet 56,000 people right. because these two dudes did something in Kansas or Kentucky or whatever the fuck right. it was, um, and then we're doing this to 350,000 people, who, which were, I think, the amount of people that are affected by this ban. Right. Um, uh, it's it's just a, it's just a numbers I mean, game at this point. I, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like it seems like we're we're focusing on one small aspect. Of this. <clears throat> Damn, see the cast on again now. Is it that bad? It's home it's instant. Oh shit! There's <clears throat> gonna be a, this is gonna be a short podcast, yeah. guys. Get the EpiPen ready. Uh, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? So so it's it's the the scope of this, right? Right. And especially when you consider, you know, for instance, Sudan. We haven't been involved in any terror activity in this country pretty much ever. So the, the, the reason why we're on the list was because in the 90s, pre-9-11, Sudan became kind of like a, um, almost like a, a... Training facility? Not training facility, but just kind of like an open border type state, right? So, okay. for instance, Osama bin Laden had a house in Sudan. Just right. a little getaway. Yeah, just he had, he had a place gotcha. in Sudan. And, and they were very kind of amenable to letting anybody in the country, right? Yeah. And uh, and that's why Bill Clinton ordered the missile strikes. If you remember in 99, I believe, they ordered missile strikes to hit strategic areas, like the factories that they called were, were maybe... This is in Sudan. This is in, I was in Sudan when this happened. I was Jesus in Sudan Christ. on vacation. And Dude, that's how you know we bomb a lot of countries, but dude, I don't even remember the man, ones we Man, it was like, yo, we it's crazy. Sudan? Yeah, man. But it's funny because when he did it, the first thing he did, like, it's funny, like, so when it happened... First of all, it was like uh, what the fireworks going on for. Like we thought, we thought it was fireworks. So we go outside and we see like the sky lit up. Yeah, because they literally hit strategic and actual building, right? Right. And so everyone's like, "Did we just get? Did we just get bombed? What happened here?" Yeah. And the news starts coming in. United States did a surgical strike on a factory in Sudan, and then they hit somewhere else. Can't remember whether it was Yemen or Iraq or somewhere like that. Right. And so we're like, man, what, like, what gives? And we're all angry and stuff. And then Bill Clinton came on and he gave this speech. And at the end of the speech, like, oh, sounds like a pretty good life. <laughs> like, he actually convinced me, like, oh, you know, I can't be mad, right? Right. Because he made it clear, it's like, well, this is not an attack on Sudan, the nation. This is an attack on these on factions. On this facility yep. that we believe is in cahoots with outside terrorist now, things, right? If somebody said, a, the World Trade Center is, you know, we're going to blow it up, not because it's an attack on right. the United States well, in general, but because there's some shady shit happening they, in the World Trade Center. The, let me say, they hit the factory at night, yeah, and nobody died, I don't think, because it was at night. 
So they did it at a time where there weren't, they knew, weren't people yeah. around. That being said, you're not going to get away with blowing some shit up on American soil. I understand right. it's the nicest oh, way to uh, bomb uh, somebody. Uh, yes, it is the most Bill Clinton diplomatic way to blow right. somebody up. That was very, very kind. That being said, you can't blow people's shit up. No, I mean, you can't. But sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do it. Right. And so and maybe your government wasn't capable of getting rid of the criminal element because they didn't have the power. My, my, no, my government is a bunch of shit balls. Or they were part of the criminal element. They're just shit balls. OK. They're and they're shit balls for many different reasons. But yeah. um, but the, the reason I'm telling the story is that's why kind of Sudan was on the list since like the midnight, like 93 or something like that. Uh huh. Fast forward to now, where, mind you, same government, same shit balls, but they've definitely cleaned up their act on that. They kind of figured out ever since they found oil in Sudan. Yeah. It's like, ah, we're turning away a lot of money. Yeah. We're leaving money on the table by kind of associating with the wrong people. So they've kind of cleaned up their act, right? Okay. And so one of Obama's final things was to start the loosening of restrictions on Sudan. Gotcha. Start to normalize economic kind of relations and, and gotcha. stuff like that. Not all the way, but kind of moving towards that. So for this ban to kind of happen, it, it's just like, I mean. Have there been acts of terror that have happened within Sudan in recent years? Oh yeah, there's been genocide. I mean, this is what my government is about. It's so... It's not like these places, or not like Sudan is harmless. Well, but it's it's harmless to the United States, is what I would say. It's harmless to the United States right. because we make it harmless. To the no, United States. no, it's harmless to the United States because we have no means to carry out any sort of attack on the United States. I think that's debatable, right? We also uh, thought that Osama bin Laden had no okay, means to but, attack. Him. But again, this is a guy who had a training camps, sure, heavily organized, and most importantly. Taught in the art of guerrilla warfare by the United States. Okay, dude, so, don't so, so, don't so, get me wrong no, here. I'm yeah, just, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying to compare the two. Sure. It's like you know, it's I, like saying uh, like the, the Phoenix Suns and the Golden State Warriors are the same because they both, both play fast. No, right. like one is really organized and they're great at what they do. Sure, and the other is just a bunch of small guys. Sure, but they're both capable of playing basketball. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you're willing, if you're willing to, the thing about this uh, again, terrorism shit is, if you're willing to give your again, life, you could do whatever you want. Su Su Sudanese, Su Sudan, there has not been a Sudanese citizen who's been involved. In I don't like that argument because this isn't about punishment; it's about prevention, right? Because if we were if we were banning but, people who have have hurt the United States, right, right, there wouldn't be a Japanese restaurant in all of America, sure, right, sure. Thank if, God we have about, Japanese people if here. It's about prevention. Wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? take stronger steps towards those who have harmed us recently. How uh, recent? So like at, Somalia? I would say places like Saudi Arabia. We're talking about people who are from Saudi Arabia, sure. but not trained within Saudi Arabia, not making these acts happen because of Saudi Arabia. Like there's another kind, situation it where- It kind of is. Like people think that Saudi Arabia is this cuddly, fuzzy place that loves America, uh, and it's not really like that. I, I can't uh, or, or speak you, on... Or even give you a better one. Yeah. Russia. Oh, Russia is... is, is I mean, I, I don't I don't think they are our friends. And when I say our, I'm putting myself on the American side yeah. here. But I don't think anything about them is friendly or, or trustworthy sure. or anything like that. Sure. And... Russia is an interesting one because obviously we have shitty diplomatic relations with them. But also they can't just travel to America and we can't just travel to... Um, we can't just travel to Russia. Like, if you spend more than twenty four hours in a but, Russian airport, but, you need a visa. But see, but sure. and if you're a Russian and you need and you want to get a visa to come to America, right. you have to go through like some psychological okay. experiment and okay. that kind so, of shit. So, yeah. Schultz, this this is the thing. So, a lot of people are like, yeah, we you know we need to vet these people more, uh, you know, uh, more scru with more scrutiny. Sure. And I asked to people who say that, do you know how hard it is to get a green card? Do you know how hard it is to get a visa as a Sudanese citizen? Yeah. It's extremely hard. It's not like, yeah. oh, went there today, come back Friday. Yeah. We're talking about months and months and months of wait, of waiting, just waiting because they're checking everything. Sure. And that's how it's been for a long time. And so for someone to go through this extreme process and then upon arrival here, if they were allowed on a plane, to be told, hold on, we got to vet you all over again, and we don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's redundant, for one thing. Yeah. And for another thing, it's, it's unnecessary. And then the other thing I want to point out 
And this is this is the important. But who part. decides if it's unnecessary? I mean, like I don't know if you have me personally. I, my issue is with the idea of banning people from America. Philosophically speaking, America is different than every other country in the world because we let people in. Right. We were one of the first nations, maybe the first nation, to literally accept people from other places right. with completely different cultures, completely different religions, everything, and not on the basis of guilt. Right, England accepted co people from all around the world because they colonized them, and right. it was like, all right, well, fucking, we stole all your money and jewels. You might as well come and hang out, drink some tea, whatever you want to do. Same thing with France. Obviously, there's you know Africans that are in France, but yeah, they brutally colonized them right. for hundreds of years. So it's like America just did it on the on the strength of, hey, come on, bro. I mean, I, I mean it wasn't the strength of come on, bro. I mean, the country was founded by people who were fleeing. See, by refugees. Exactly. By refugees. Right. So we're found of so It's a refugee nation. I have a deep problem with the idea of banning refugees because I think it's against the American way. Right. I, I really right. and I feel like we well, need to have compassion, that kind of stuff. That being said, that being said, I also don't have the information that experts have. And if experts have this information that says that there are, that we need to, again, for three months, look at the way that we're vetting these people coming into the country and make sure that you in America are as safe as possible, then I have to defer to them because I don't have that information. I can't so, tell you about how to run a basketball team because I don't have that information. Right. I do it, so, but that uh, doesn't mean that I can't. This, this is so let, me, let, me, let me just get this out. So my point is, so my point is with these countries that are on the list, uh, a list of countries of concern, which was started by the Obama administration, which is very important to point out. This is not Trump handpicking countries. Well, again, a lot of those countries have been on the list for quite a while. Sure, Sudan, but they are, Obama. they are. They oh, are. But these seven are Obama's countries of concern. That was those are countries of concern list. You can look that up. So this is tr now. Is it strategic that Trump took these seven countries? Probably, because then he can always defer to Obama and go, well, Obama put them on the concern list. I get it. That being said, if you have intelligence that said that we have a realistic concern and we should t uh, you know, toughen up the vetting process, I'm not in the position to make decisions on American safety. That's not my job. Sure. Okay, so my rebuttal is this. So first off, there's an assumption here that this is being done on intelligence, right? Yeah. And I'm, I don't know. You don't know, I don't know. But I think... Turn off your fucking phone, man. That's what you <laughs> always Charlamagne. do. Charlamagne. <laughs> Roll reversal. Go, go, go. I'm but, say. but I think there have been enough instances in the very short term that show that this administration doesn't exactly do things based on intelligence or by the book. So, for instance, we have intelligence that Russia... Is up to no good. Whether they sure. fiddled in elections or not, I'm sure. not going to, but p clearly up to no good. Sure. Agreed. But there seems to be a very open arms uh, reaction from, from this administration. There is also, uh, when you talk about things like, uh, uh, this is what I want to say earlier, right? Even if you were going to say this needs to be done, right, for, as a matter of national security, there's a way to do it legally, right? When the attorney general, who is basically the, the, the lawyer of the United States mm -hmm. says, this ain't legal. She didn't say that. That's fake news. She, she said that she didn't uh, necessarily agree with it, but she didn't say that there was legal reasons for not doing it. And, that, and that's another thing that well, comes out. Federal, is just, we just come out so and we say on, these so things. The yeah. federal judge said it was unconstitutional. Did she didn't happen? say that. The federal judge didn't? A federal judge might have, but a federal judge is not the attorney general of the United States I'm of America. Just, I'm just saying. She just said she disagreed yeah, with it, the, and she said that, that we have a moral responsibility to um, look outside the law given these certain situations. But, given a, which, fed, but which, a federal judge did say, right? A, a federal judge somewhere thinks prostitution should be legal, and a federal judge somewhere else thinks it should be illegal. People disagree on tons of issues. But this is not an we have, This is not a we personal have opinion. How many actual... Supreme Court justices? Five of them think abortion should be right. legal. Seven think that right. they should be. It should be legal, right? It, no. Just because a federal judge feels a certain way doesn't mean that's the end all be all. Sure. It's not just okay. dread. You know? All right. Okay. Let me let me put it to you like this. Fair. Let's just assume that it is perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it, right? right? Even though I don't think it is. Um, well, it, it is legal. You can legally stop people from coming into your country. Again. It's, 
We'll agree to disagree on that. You can't legally tell so- no, someone no, to not can, come you, in your country? You of course you, know, you can. You can't unilaterally just do that shit. But anyways. Wait, why not? Don't get, don't, don't get it to it. Hold on, let me finish my point. All right. We're going to assume that it is perfectly legal, right? Yeah. Or I'll, I'll just, for the purposes of this, I'll agree with you. Oh, yeah, it is legal. Okay. To have people detain families, yeah. detain for over 20 hours okay. without food or water. The motherfuckers in Sing Sing are getting three a day. Yeah. Right? Like, that's inhumane, right? To have a five-year-old handcuffed and for the White House press secretary to come out and say, hey, man, basically say, AJ, nothing but a number. In response to that, like that, that's the stuff that erodes trust in that, oh, they're, 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 they have our best interests at heart. They're just trying to be extra careful, extra secure. That's the kind of stuff that goes above and beyond. That's in the Constitution is called cruel and unusual punishment. You wouldn't think handcuffing a child, five years old, is cruel and unusual punishment? I need to know why you're handcuffing him. Are you handcuffing him for his own safety? I, Schultz, I just need to Schultz, know the situation. Schultz, Schultz. I need to know the situation. Schultz, a five-year-old? I like, need to know the I know situation. You're playing devil's, I know you're playing devil's advocate, but at some point, there has to be a line where you say, ah, I can't, I can't be an advocate Would for that I devil. Do, if you're asking me, me personally, do I think that there's ever a reason to handcuff a child? Mm -hmm. A five-year-old. Not I, not, I can't think of a reason why I would handcuff a child. I'm not talking about like the kid that beat up uh, sure. Cat, Cat Williams. Sure. I'm talking about a five-year-old. Sure, sure. Now, if if you're telling me if you're telling me there's a situation right where there is a five-year-old kid and there is no one to watch or said five-year-old kid while parents are being questioned or something like that and we don't want to leave a five-year-old kid somewhere, I'm trying to think of a situation why you would handcuff this kid. And you think handcuffs is the answer for his own safety? You handcuff him to some shit so he doesn't walk around. That's you think that's I look. You, that's, I wouldn't oh, do it if somebody came in. If Sean Spicer came in and said, "This is the deal." Yeah. The, uh, the parents were being detained and the kid was by himself. We didn't want him walk around we handcuffed him to the to this is what i this you would say yeah you know what that was a, you if know, somebody I, came to me and they said listen there now i don't think that this is the deal but I'm they just said saying, yeah. they said hypothetically speaking we're in a room there's two parents that are extremely upset about what's happening rightfully so mm -hmm. agree with them they're being unruly right then you have a five-year-old kid who's also freaking out right so they're like, oh, we got a little music going on in the back. Yeah. So uh, there's a five year old, there's a five year old kid that's freaking out of there. These two parents are being unruly. They need to be detained. The five year old is running around. He's going crazy. He's doing crazy shit. And somebody goes, okay, well, there's there's two of us. It's one parent. There's there's two of these parents, right? We have the five year old. We, we we put a handcuff on him or something like that. So he's so he's calm. He's not moving around. He's not doing anything. He's not going crazy. He's not throwing shit. We make sure that the parents calm down. And then we look. I don't even believe in my justification I mean, for this. But I'm just saying. My point is, you hear yourself say it. Like, yeah, yeah. You think to yourself, this is ridiculous. But my, I just because I think it's ridiculous doesn't mean I'm not there. No, but but Schultz, I'm not there. Schultz, this is my point. This is my point. There are some things. You're right. That require nuance. That require more information to understand everything. Uh, uh, no, there's some things that really don't. Yeah, really don't. The crazier the thing, the more it requires explanation. That's that's what we need explanation for no, no. the most. No, 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 no. Somebody gets killed. I need to know why. Okay, yes, but that doesn't mean the explanation is worthwhile, right? Well, it depends All on right, the explanation. So this needed explanation because it is crazy. And you gave one possible explanation. And the explanation was like, yeah, that doesn't fucking make sense. So this was, this was a dumb move. Agreed that, that's it's my, dumb. That, that's, and that's my point. Yeah. And, and, and that's my point, right? So when that, you do things that... that so lack, that makes it everything no, else wrong? Not everything else wrong. But when something that seems to be pretty, pretty basic, right? Five-year-old should be a way to respond. Sure, it's a sob that. story. No, I'm, no, I'm empathetic. Sob, da, 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 da. It's not a sob story, Schultz. Yeah, yeah. If I told you, what's your name, my man? Adam. Shout out Adam. to Adam and the No Jumper podcast for, for hosting us right now. I'm really glad that I haven't had anything to say about this, this whole conversation <laughs> you guys are having. It's very intimidating. Right. So, so I, I told you if that there's a fly flying around here a second ago. And Adam pulls out a gun and shoots the fly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he said, whoa, what'd you do that, man? Oh, man, I hate flies, man. It's just, it's in un unhygienic yeah. do you trust Adam now like he said hey man let's go to a bar let's go hang out this is the dude that shot a fly with a gun that's my point there's an explanation behind it it wasn't a very good one but it was kind of he did want to kill a fly I don't have a problem with flies being killed but the guy used the gun to do it that's my point when you have someone who does things in a very irrational and excessive way even if they can explain to justify it it does not breed trust in his decisions when it comes to big things real things that, that really do might deserve a gun question 
does Adam kill the fly with the gun? Sure, and he may, maybe he absolutely took out some would love to go hang out with him. And <laughs> without a doubt, unbelievable Shout precision, out to Adam, man. Because one, that I'm safe now, right? <laughs> Nothing yeah, bad yes. can happen to yeah, me like, if Adam is there. It's John Wick. <laughs> I'm basically hanging out with fucking John Wick the whole night. I would love it. Uh, is it uh, cruel and unusual? Yes. Is it unnecessary force? Yes. Does that mean that vetting uh, refugees never, from places never, that harbor terrorism and have terrorism is wrong? I, I, no, I, I never. Said, it's just a sad story that you're using you, to deflect. No, from this situation. I'm not, even a deflect. I'm not saying people should not be vetted, but I'm saying if you're going to do it, there are ways to do it that aren't just roughshod that shows sure. that you have And most no five-year-olds weren't handcuffed. <sighs> okay. Let me put it to you like this. So, the five-year-old was cuffed, right? Yeah. We've kind of, I, I am assuming, based on my Adam example, we've kind of come to the understanding that Pretty much, they're re it's really hard to come up with a justification for it, right? Sure, but I don't okay, understand why okay. we're hanging on no, no, to this because, one story. Because, There's always going to be a sad it's not story. It's a sad story. It's the reaction. So it's not like... So again, if Adam shoots the fly, and you're like, Adam, why why you shoot the fly? He's like, oh, this fly is bothering me. He's like, why don't you just use that fly swatter? And he says, my bad, man. You're right, man. That, that probably was too much to use a gun. Yeah. That's really different. Then Adam saying, sometimes, I don't know that fly, maybe I needed a gun to kill that fly. Maybe yeah. a fly swatter wouldn't get it done. That's what I'm talking about. It's not about the anecdotal evidence, like, this happened, this is yes, so bad. This it's about how do you react. It's the same thing. It's sure. like, yes, cop this, pulls you over. I get it, I get it. All right. My point is, you're taking one situation to... Um, uh, there are plenty of these examples of, of, of maybe not five-year-olds getting handcuffed, but plenty of examples of things that are happening that don't make a whole lot of sense. Out of this ban you're talking about? Yes. Specifically. Okay, so out of the 109 people whose lives were affected because that's how many people were detained mm -hmm. you're saying there are plenty of these situations where they there were pl affected. so i'll give you I'll 109 give, out of 350,000 I'll, I'll give you a perfect example 109 I'll, out I'll of 350,000 the most re I'll very the most good relevant example very good odds the Go. most relevant example yeah i can't leave yeah because if i leave i can't come back in again get a green I'm, card i'm on t Really? Whoa! What's, Why what haven't you this? gotten a green card? Because it's hard to get a green card. That's what the fuck I'm trying to you tell you. You haven't because you've applied? Who, who, yes, I've applied. I've and applied. they said no? They've said wait, and they've said not yet, and they've said damn near no now on some other, because I've had multiple applications. But that's my point, Schultz, is when people say, we gotta, they're acting like they're standing at Costco and yeah. having our green card samples. It's not easy. Again, just for those of you guys that are listening to me for the first time, don't remember the first couple of times I was on this podcast. My name's Amino Hassan. I work for ESPN. I'm an NBA analyst. I'm on TV every week. I'm on the jump. 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Yeah. I'm on Sports Nation a lot of times. Yeah. 1, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. I'm on Sports Center a bunch, right? Yeah. I write for the website. I do digital videos. We have a podcast. We have several podcasts that we yeah. do. NBA Lockdown Podcast, the True Hoop Podcast, Black Opinions Matter Monday. Check it out, right? All, all on iTunes or on the ESPN app. Uh, what else? I've worked for professional teams. My application had uh, letters of recommendation from championship winning NBA coaches, mm -hmm. GMs, uh, Hall of Fame players. Just, right? out of, just a question. Who better to blow up an arena? <laughs> I'm just saying. Guess, yo, it could be a long game thing. One it's a long game one, process. Yo, I love the Manchurian Candidate. Both versions. <laughs> Frank Sinatra and Denzel. I love those movies. You should be allowed in just for knowing that Frank Sinatra made the Manchurian Shit, Candidate. Man, Yes, it's, okay, it's so exactly you, the kind of background research I think you need a new immigration lawyer. I just want to point this out because it's, it's, I got no. my ex a visa, my ex a long time ago right. a visa, and she had like no experience Where was she doing from? anything. Where was she from? Canada. There you go. That's the point. Yeah. That's the point. So you need so, to be from Canada. Not even because if my place of birth, which mine is, yeah. Khartoum, Sudan, is on my Canadian passport, yeah. again, still got the same problem. I've got a friend who, uh, who was born in South Sudan. He has siblings who are born in North Sudan. He's South Sudanese. They are South Sudanese by they're not they're but not those, they're not even Muslim. Siblings, bro. They're not even Muslim. Yeah. They're they're South Sudanese by nationality and dual dual citizenship. Sure. Right? Um and the only connection to North Sudan Sudan, which is that's the name of the is that they were born there. They are having issues with travel. 
This is what I'm talking about. It's 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 the kind of it's the kind of painting with a broad brush that comes from someone who sees a fly and says. Shh, shh. No, I, I, well, I disagree with you. I think it's. I think what happens is in these situations where you create legislation, legislation is a broad brush. I, I, I hate that. Like when when you make a law, it is the broadest of brushes, and then is left up to the states to interpret that law, and then each individual judge within the states to interpret that law. You cannot drive drunk. Well, what is drunk? Drunk for you might be different than drunk for me. Well, drunk in this state is point whatever. Drunk in this state is point six, etc. But when you make legislation, there is a broad brush. And this broad brush ends up fucking over some people. That is every single law, I mean, no matter what the law is, is going to have some circumstance. There's laws, for example, where if you're 18 years old and you have sex with a 17-year-old, you know what you are? You're a fucking pedophile, okay? And for the rest of your life, you got to go on Megan's Law. you got to go on all that shit, right? Uh, 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 Real talk? What? You should have paused, right? Why? You know what you are? Because I was going to say Andrew Schultz. <laughs> no, 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 never, never, never that, never that. Um, but real talk, like, think about that. That law is made to protect kids from getting fucked by adults, right? But because it is a broad stroke, which all laws are, right. unfortunately, some people get caught in that law and they got tons of stories of these kids that are just like you. They're petitioning to the government. Hey, she was 17. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. Her parents are cool. I'm cool. Why am I in jail for this? Why am I on this list? And they're sorry that the law is the law. So but see, uh, you, know look the at, you know what the difference is? What is the difference? At least in some technical form, that kid broke the law. It's a dumb law, right? And, it, yeah. and it's, it's application in his case stinks. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say, oh, you're, you're a pedophile kid. Sure. But I'm just saying, in the technical sense, he broke the law. Sure. I didn't break any laws. Yeah, but the law isn't just because you're here, you're allowed to be a citizen. There's no, no law. No. And the law isn't just because you're here, you're allowed to be a green card. No. You're allowed to be a resident, but there's no law that says if you've been here a certain amount of but there, time, you are this. But this is what I'm saying. Now, there, there's a law that says that if you are if you were born in the one of these places again yeah. have no connection no affiliation no uh n no not even a cultural connection to these places that being born somewhere is enough of a uh guilt factor sure. for you to violate this law for 3 months that's what they say now well, they, for six of the countries, it's for three months. And yeah. then with Syria, it could be indefinite. But so for three months, that is the case. Um, okay. Well, let's, let's, let's keep moving because I want to, do you think that this is a Muslim ban? I think it's actually a ban against refugees, to be honest. But what about, I mean, the majority of the refugees that come in this country aren't from these countries. But I, I, the majority are from, or the number one country is Burma or Myanmar, and then the number but, two country is Democratic Republic of Congo. Then, all right, then I'll say yes. I'm trying, I'm trying to play devil's advocate and not make myself the the center of this. But yeah, it's it's. I think it is definitely with the eye to Muslims and Muslim nations. Now, what do you say to the person that goes that? the most populous Muslim countries in the world aren't on this list. Indonesia and Malaysia. Indonesia uh, is number one. Number two is India. Number three is Pakistan. Right. Um, I think only a, one of these countries is in the top 10. I, I think... One of the countries I, on the list I, is in I the top 10. I think there's a definite thread between economic importance as a trade partner... Interesting. ...and who's on the list. You don't think it has anything to do with terrorist activity? I, like I said, if you round up all the people who have attacked this country. Not no no not attack this country. I'm talking about terrorist activity okay. involved in terrorist activity. Yeah. I think a lot of them come from countries that seem to be okay, and the reason why they're okay is because they have there is a strong economic bond between those nations. But what about the terrorist activity that's happening in Iraq? The terrorist activity that's happening in Syria? The terrorist activity that's happening in Yemen? Like we can just do quick Google searches and find car bombs. You know, in the last weeks, okay. killing twenty thirty people. Wait, but that's terrorist. So wait, oh, that doesn't make sense. You so can you're saying, still you're be saying a if, terrorist if, if to if your some, own people. That's not what we're attacking though. Cause there's terrorism, thrown, there's terrorism in, in Pakistan and there's terrorism in, in India. Well, Pakistan is a huge issue because you could act like you could make the argument that it harbors the most terrorists in Pakistan. Yeah. And not only that, but they also have the bomb. And they have the bomb. Right. Yeah. So that's my point is my point is that the reason, again, it's like the wire, right? If, if you want to know the answer, follow the money. Like, 
the ones where we there's man we got financial incentives in these places ah no no you're gonna massage it no King what's his name Kim Faisal yeah they're all cool but it's like Syria, there's no, I mean, there's no money. Yet. There's no economy. Also, right? how are you going to bomb Saudi Arabia when they own a quarter of the United States of America? You can't bomb someone from their own shit, <laughs> not bomb or ban someone from their own shit. Right. Um, I think, yeah, I never thought about the money angle. I think that's, that's, that's great. I mean, look, go down the list, all seven countries. There's like almost no, uh, maybe yeah, Libya, Libya might be the most. I mean, Libya was, was, did have some money until Gaddafi yeah. got, you know, knocked out. Um, okay. What about this angle? And this is something that's been kind of bothering me. Um, since we're so directly involved with how fucked up, with the reason why these countries are so fucked up, don't you think that we owe it to them to take in refugees? It's like if I punch you in the eye, the least I can do is give you an ice pack. Right. Um, you know what? On some level, it, this is how I feel. I don't even, I've reached the point where like, I'm not even looking for restitution, Right so much as I look at this policy and I wonder how many more aggrieved people you just created, right? So the idea is instead of curtailing terrorism, you're actually breeding new terrorism, right? Because I've heard you, that argument. You, you and I have had this conversation before about right. what the real terrorists want, right? Like not like these disenchant like the dude that shot up the Orlando uh, nightclub yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm talking about the real ones the masterminds right. yeah, yeah. they want this they want everybody angry they want, they're like Twitter trolls right they right. want a bunch of angry people cussing each right. other out in the mentions and all that and, yeah. and that's what they want and they, and they want to be able to say look see I told you they don't like us I told you they're against us right. and this becomes a recruiting tool like, so do you think that like the liberals that have called this a Muslim ban are feeding into that even more than the conservatives then? Because no conservatives or Trump organization ever say anything about a Muslim ban. I I, th I think... The liberals have promoted think, this idea of Muslim ban. No, but, but see, here's the thing. I think what they've done is shown that the American people are not united on this topic. Yeah. And it's not like a 90 Real quick, 10, I right? feel like we're doing this episode in Grand Theft Auto. It does, man. Yo, yo it's <laughs> crazy. fucking yo, fire I trucks outside. But it Always. is a place. <laughs> even, uh, no, no, it looks like, you know. It could a, be some Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Yeah. You and, walk the hooker into the yeah. back room. You hum through the window. <laughs> There's some guns on the table. Like, ooh, I needed some more. <laughs> There are no guns in here. I'm sorry. Oh, I do not. Get rid of that fly. Damn, Adam, come on now. You, you guys are so much better at discussing this than I could ever imagine being. And I read the news all the time. You guys, you guys are killing it. Well, this guy is this guy's the one, right? This, this is the one to talk to. Okay, so so back to what but, you said. But yeah, so, so I think it's important, right? It's important for the world, not just Muslim countries, but for the world to know that these actions are not representative of what the greater population believes in. Right. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's it's something that um, now you're saying what you're basically saying is by bringing attention to it, that aspect of it, you're actually feeding into what the terrorists want. But the terrorists don't right. want us torn apart and fighting each other. They want to unify their people. Right. right. They want Muslims worldwide to say, oh, see, they, they right. told you they're bad. They don't care if we're having a civil war over here. Quite the opposite. Ha us having a civil war over here sends a message to Muslims like, no, 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 that's not true. Americans don't hate us. Look, all these yeah. millions of people are at airports shutting things down. They, they want unified front against them. Like, think about this. That makes sense. Do you think yeah. the terrorists like seeing that picture of... Of uh, all the protesters. Uh, not only the protesters, but uh, the Hasidic Jewish guy with his daughter and they're holding a sign that says, I'm Jewish and yeah. I love my Muslim brothers and sisters. Photoshopped. <laughs> 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 you know, that's... Just, extend the Ban. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the truth. They don't like they that's what they don't the last thing they want is to see people right. saying So on one them. hand, you are well, on one hand they might be promoting this idea of a Muslim ban that might not be intellectually honest. On the other hand, when it's more of like a poor Muslim ban, yes, right? Yes, sure. And not only Muslim, anybody that's in that country is yes. banned as well. That being said, it is targeting more Muslims right. because they are the majority of people in the country. Right. But just to clarify, anybody with it that's in the country, atheist, Jew, yeah. Christian, doesn't matter. Yes, You're yes. also banned from, yeah. from, from coming for that three-month period. But 
But again, it's more of a impoverished Muslim ban. And of course, there's going to be terrorism when you have an impoverished group of people, just like we have gangs when you have impoverished group right. of people in America. Just like there's a criminal element, there's an organized criminal element anywhere there are poor people. Right. It just I mean, so happens. It just this so happened. Really, I think someone just yeah. threw a chancla. CJ, CJ is coming in. <laughs> Grove Street. Uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What are your thoughts on stop and frisk? Um, I, I, I don't look. Is there an argument that there was effective? Some people make this argument effective. I have to look up the, and the, like the see the, the actual show numbers. That it wasn't, but I'm just saying in in general, just the concept of stop and frisk. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't, I think that, I think that it's, um, I think it's a, there's, there's something against our civil liberties about right. it. Right. I think that you should have, you know, the right to walk down the fucking street wearing whatever the hell you want to wear. This is America, the idea of freedom. And, uh, you shouldn't be stopped and frisked because of it. Um, this idea that they disproportionately targeted blacks and Latinos mm -hmm. is a little iffy. You don't think that's the case? You, based on crime statistics, they actually disproportionately targeted everyone else because they did a six month study. I think it was in like 2010 from like January to June. Right. And this is in New York City. In New York City. Mm -hmm. And 98% of gun assailants were black and Latino. Mm -hmm. And they were only targeted at 80%. So that means they were under targeted due to the crime that they were, crimes they were committing. Gun, gun assailants that they were apprehended. They were apprehended. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so you could make the argument that they were, if we're going to target people based on how many crimes are actually committed, mm -hmm. that they were under targeted. And the Chinese people that were stopped and the, the Jewish dude that was stopped, the, the, the Italian guy that was stopped was actually stopped too much compared to how much. It was. That being said, I'm against it philosophically. You can't fucking stop me if I'm walking down the street. You just can't, let me do my shit. You got to. I have to have the freedom. I know this sounds fucked up, but I have to have the freedom to commit the crime. And it is a weird concept yeah, please, to accept. Please, please never, never use that. I mean, I, you, you I, know, I, I, I intellectually get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm begging you not to say that to other people. You know, what, but you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> part of freedom is you have the freedom yeah. to do that shit, and then your freedom is taken away from you. Right. But part of freedom is giving people the trust, going to people. Right. Hey, I believe deep down that you it's will the make code. the right this it's the honor we, code we live by an honor the code. teacher walks out the room are some people going to exchange answers on the yeah. test yeah but if the majority of people don't we're good right. and i would rather i would honestly rather a couple people exchange answers right mm -hmm. and let that happen mm -hmm. than have the teacher there looking over our shoulder every single time and have you know communist fucking russia okay that, that, why? What is your feeling on stopping? First? No, I, I I feel the same way. I feel literally exactly the same way. I feel like that's that you, when you said that's that's why I say I intellectually agree with what you're saying, right? Because at the end of the day, that's that's what freedom is about, right? Yeah. That's you know when when George W. Bush said after 9-11 you gotta go out, go shopping, and go to movies and stuff because if you don't, that's what the terrorists want, right? Like that's that's what you're talking about, like the freedom to live our lives without living in fear. Yeah. Did you just quote Bush in a positive way? Uh, look at what the world has become, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Look at what the world has become. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is also brought to you by Loot Crate. Loot Crate offers an epic range of pop culture items for less than $20 a month. Whether you're shopping for the geek in your life or if you are that geek, Loot Crate is the best surprise you know is coming. Okay? Every month, there's a different theme and new exclusive items that you can only get with Loot Crate. Treat yourself every month or give the gift of geeking out to a friend or loved one. Roll up your sleeves and get ready to celebrate some of pop culture's most put together franchises. February's hands on theme is Build and features Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Batman, Lego Dimensions, and Tetris. And as always, our monthly t shirt and loot pin. You've got until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe receive that month's crate and when the cutoff happens that's it it's over so make sure you head to www.lootcrate.com slash idiots and enter the code idiots to save on any new subscription today get your geek on with loot crate let's talk about something else man all right i know i know it's heavy i know it's heavy okay did you cancel your uber account uh i you know what i don't use uber i use lyft do you really yeah lyft you is, use here's the woke the woke well, car service app. Using it. One, why is that one is cheaper 
Yeah, but you have that stupid pink mustache. I can't yeah, I hate that, by the I way. Fucking just lift, take away yeah, the lift mustache. It, yeah, exactly. Lift, Don't if pick you're me up in a fucking mustache. When, when the driver comes through, just have the pink L. I, I'll take the L. Give me a pink L. Give me nothing, okay? The mustache needs to go. I know. It's awful. I, I don't know what, what the thought process behind it is, but it is cheaper and free cancellation. I don't know if you guys know this. So like, Wait, do Uber, you get charged for canceling Uber? Nope. Yes, you do. Like, not not if it's five, in under like five minutes. No, no, or something no. There's like, like that. a time. There's a grace period, but then after a while, like if you cancel, like okay. you gotta pay. Lyft, the dude could be literally like three blocks away. Yeah. As long as I hit cancel before he arrives, yeah, it's free. Okay, fair enough. Anybody who canceled their Uber account because of this delete Uber shit, well, I mean, was a fucking idiot. I just I mean, want to but, but you know, but you know what? Hey, so, uh, look, all of you. I'm speaking to all of you. Here, You're a fucking here's idiot. What, You're here's morons. What I don't like. Here's what I don't like. Yeah. But do you know why? No, no. Uh, yeah, because and the guy dropped out. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, like the the whole like why? So basically, got mad. for people who don't know, real quick, uh, uh, there was a a, a strike, a the taxi, taxi strike at in JFK. New York City. The JFK taxis decide to strike for one hour. Right. What a way to fucking commit, guys! <laughs> Huge taxi strike. You really shown support the for bodega the bodega strike. You see that man? The bodega strike bullshit. That's the, there's no. no such thing as a bodega strike. Yeah. You want to strike on the bodega? Start paying taxes. They've been oh, striking for fucking man, look forty at this years. Guy, these bodegas. Dude. Yes. <laughs> I, I stop it. Get out of here. You're not. You'll be persona non grata. By the time you get back to New York, they're not going to let you in anywhere. That's fine. I got a CVS. <laughs> okay. So. Um, I guess, yo, that's a white privilege. It is. I go to it CVS. Is. I go to CVS. Let's go, baby. <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, but the point is with this Uber shit, they go, they say, um, they basically say, listen, we're going to turn off surge pricing, mm -hmm. but we're still going to pick yeah. people up for that hour, right? Yeah. Immediately people go, you know, the social justice warriors, they go, oh my God, how awful is this? Well, yeah, the nope. people who took it too far basically accused them of scabbing, right? They accused them of scabbing. Crossing the picket line. And they were but, scabbing. And, and, uh, I mean, but no. They were scabbing. Like, look, here, here's here's what I... This, Let me just I'm, get the rest of it out. Okay, go ahead. So they were, they were arguably scabbing, right? Um, now here's the thing. So people are like, oh my God, these guys are scabbing. They're making money off of the protest. Fuck them. I'm deleting Uber. I'm going to go with Lyft. What they didn't bother, bother to look up is that, you know who else was scabbing? Peter Thiel. Fucking Lyft. Oh, Lyft. Lyft was scabbing. See, okay? See. Lyft was picking people up at JFK the exact same time that Uber was, but you're too much of a fucking virtue-seeking douchebag to even Google to see if Lyft is picking people up in the first place. Here's the thing. That's why I can't respect so, it. So there are people who, on the extreme side, accuse them of scabbing. Yeah. But... What a lot of people I know, at least, and again, this is just my circle of friends. Maybe they're a little bit more informed than others. Whatever, they knew it wasn't scabbing, but they were. They felt like they tried to exploit the situation to kind of say, "Look at us, we're good guys." Like, why would they think they're good guys? Lifted. We, no, no. But I no, think lifted by that. not saying anything, by not saying anything and just doing it. You just do it. But they wanted a pat on the back for not charging surge. That's what Uber wanted. No, I think what... That's what they wanted. I think That's what, why you announced it. I think Uber wanted to go, hey, we just want to let you guys know we're not going to surge because we do support what's going on. A little let, me make, let me make the point. Look, we support what's going on. Let me make the point. Yeah. We support what's going on, right? We're not going to surge because we know it's going to be a little bit longer. It's also going to take... It's also a business move. It's going to take a little bit longer for you right. to get your Uber because right. there's going to be no surge because what surging does is enable your Uber to be there in five minutes it's no matter basically what. basically the, the purest form of the market economy. Exactly. Too much demand, we, you know, need to supply, supply and demand. get an equi equilibrium point. Yeah. Very simple. So I think what they were doing is preparing for the onslaught of these pieces of shit we're making money on. They're price gouging this and they're basically saying, listen, we're not going to price yeah. gouge, but we're not going to punish an innocent person laying Ending in JFK right. for Trump's stupid policy. Right. The innocent person landing in JFK that I just wants it. to go home and take care of his fucking kid that he hasn't seen in two weeks. Now he's got to sit around you, the airport for an hour. While I agree because with you, of Trump. While I agree with you about like the whole Uber thing because I think they didn't do anything that like you said Lyft didn't do. Uh, but when it comes to that like inconveniencing people at the airport, I. That's kind of the the whole when's the right time to protest thing, right? No, no, protest. No, I mean, it, no, protesting at the airport doesn't inconvenience I know, people. I know, I know, but it's I mean, it's tens, tangentially, right? It's tangentially. I walk around some protesters. That's something I'm all it's about. Not about protesting. walking around protesters. It's about generally like disrupting operation. That's what the protest is meant to do. It's not just to say, hey guys, we don't like this. By the way, go about your day. Airports like, are built so you can't disrupt them. 
Well, you can't even get in. It's like I check in online. I go on, you know what I mean? It's and, like, and, yet, and yet they were disrupted. All they weren't. Delta had this like shutdown or some shit, or maybe that was just what the Trump organization was saying. They had like some computer failure. I'm supportive of protests. Do your protests, even if they make no sense. Do them. You know what I mean? The whole women's march. Great. I don't know what you're protesting. But well, see, I think I think this was a little bit more. Yeah, you're right. The, the women. I saw march, signs for saying but we're against rape. Like the, who the, is running on the platform of raping people? What what politician is pro rape that you need to make a sign about not raping? Who would disagree with you in history? I'm not going to answer that. There's one. not even a I'm North gonna... Sudanese uh, <laughs> a leader that would agree with some nonsense you like know, that. But but I guess, I guess what I'm saying is these protests were a lot more focused. They were built around a, a specific thing yeah. as opposed to the protest, which, I, by the way, I, I I fully support the women's protest. Even though you don't know what it is. It's, But it's not even, I don't know what it is. I know what it is. What is I, it? It's just everything that they didn't, that people were upset with, right? What is it? It's just protesting. It was protesting the, the, the inauguration of the president. I mean, just say you don't know what the fuck it is. No, but that's, but that's what it is, right? Is it a women's march or is it an anti-Trump march? It's an anti-Trump march, right? Okay, then but call or, it that. But or, organized and mostly mobilized by women. Great. Listen, I think all these marches should be done by women. Not a single violent act in the entire women's. But like, that's just what happens. They come together. Shit is peaceful. Shit is graceful. Do it. It's awesome. Every march should be all women, and then men should just attend. That's that's literally how it should be. If we want it to be as most peaceful as possible, nothing. Literally, it's unbelievable. It, it was beautiful. I mean, they they still had some problems. What in Seattle? What happened? Cops with the tear gas. And the they tear gas ladies? They that was just women crying because they're emotional. <laughs> There's a big difference between women getting emotional, okay? There was a, there was a lot of periods going on, okay? Everybody well, started let's, cycling let's, together. Let's talk about this Beyonce's is what twins, happens. Man. Like, well, <laughs> First of all, Beyonce's twins, was that not the greatest response to a diss track ever by a rapper? Lemonade comes out, shits on Jay Z for a whole album. Oh, and Jay Z goes, "What, bitch? Here's two inside you, right? Yeah. Never you know ether That's, couldn't touch that. Yo, man. Nothing could touch what Jay Z did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> that. But you got to remember, also, you got to live with a pregnant woman. And you don't hang out with her. Let me tell you something. Solange hang out, no. hangs out with her. The no, mom you know, hangs you know out what? with her. You're right. I, I was about to say, look, man, like you can't leave them during pregnancy. Um, he, they don't hang but out then with I, her. Then I just thought about it. I think probably got like a million people that work for him and have to do all that. Like, Dude, I, I think about myself. I got to do all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're, you have like a, like a family you have yeah. to take care of. You have responsibilities. Isn't it weird though? What? Don't you think there's anything weird about, like I think I thought about like the idea that Beyonce finds out she's pregnant. Yeah. Like, oh my God, we're gonna have twins. <gasps> like, wait a minute. What? Sorry to interrupt, but that would be the greatest turn of events. What? If they weren't Jays. Oh come on, man! Stop. <laughs> oh, that you thought lemonade was uh, good. That, that's her. Just, just back, back to the <laughs> just back. <laughs> that would be amazing. But he doesn't know, <laughs> dude. Oh, that would, the, that's the, back the to back. Rap, the greatest rap beef of the all time. The greatest rap beef of all time. And who'd she get pregnant by? Who? Un. Oh. <laughs> That's how you know he's a comedian. He brings Let's it back full circle. Full circle, baby. Oh, Dude, you can't write these soap operas. Yo, but no, but seriously, think about, like, on some level, I looked at that picture and I was like, I feel sorry for this woman. Whoa, why? Because, because she can't just be pregnant and have twins. She has to make a production of this and a photo shoot. And the the, the, the kid has to come handing her, like, an olive branch. Like, it's so <laughs> much, like, it, I looked at all these pictures and I'm like, this is so much and she doesn't look happy in any of them by the yeah, way yeah that's true it looks like it's been a long day and let me yeah, tell you yeah. something again she like, seems pregnant I, yeah <laughs> like look when, when women are pregnant their hormones are are, are, are out of whack um, and, yeah. this, and this is just scientific fact and they're irritated they can be irritated by smells yeah they can ir be irritated by just the sound of something yeah in my case it was my voice <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's, it's anything and it's not not um, this is just Biology is yeah. at work, and so, um, like, I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking about all you know. Now that I've kind of lived this li public life, 
what, however small uh, yeah, yeah. of a section I've lived in. You don't have to be humble about I'm it. I'm just saying, They're like, a big deal. The, the couple of photo shoots, yeah, bouncers on yeah, yeah. yeah, the, the, the small portion of, of photo shoots I've done and stuff like that, yeah. it's a pain in the ass. I just came here from a taping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was just. The actual doing it wasn't bad, but it's just like all the like, do it again, do it again, do it again. And it's just like, Jesus Christ. Like, it was all right. Trust me. It wasn't perfect. Yeah. But it'll do. Right, 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 right. And that doesn't exist for for these people who are behind the cameras and stuff. They want to get it perfect because obviously that's their reputations on the line. So when you're a a photographer and you're tasked with taking Beyonce's pregnancy photos, Right. Right. It can't be just all right, right? No, it's got to be, the gotta be your ever. greatest work ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, as a result, you're there telling Beyonce, "All right, now, now turn a little bit. No, wait, hold Ooh. on. Can we get a different light you're here? Telling a pregnant one. Yo, yeah. man, like, so I feel, I felt so sorry for her because I was like, she couldn't just be pregnant and just say, "Hey, by the way, I had twins." Like, she had to have an announcement in the whole. So here's my question: One, how much of that is choice? And two, uh, well, first of all, go, we'll start with one choice. How much of it is true? That's a good question because some people would argue that she wants to do that because she wants to remain in the public eye and yeah. that's part, part, of, part and parcel of being a celebrity yeah. is maintaining the celebrity status. Yeah. By give, That's why people show their baby pictures to People Magazine or yes. whatever, right? And it's lucrative, right? right? You yeah. can sell it. There's millions yeah. of dollars, yeah. The other part of me, though, thinks that when you reach that status, like Michael Jackson didn't have to do anything, right? Yep. He's, he's Michael Jackson. At, the, yep. at some point, you're Michael Jackson, and no matter what I do, I'm going to be famous as hell for yep. the rest of my life. Yeah. And I kind of feel like Beyonce's reached that level. Absolutely. But maybe the machine around her still wants to pump out kind of content, pretty much. Because they make money off it. Because they make money off it, yes. Because those are her, their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. It's, their job is to make as much content from Beyonce as a person. It's not that different than, than like politics, right? It's like when a new administration comes in, right? There are a lot of jobs that are dependent yep. on keeping the same party in power. Yeah. And all those people who have mortgages, all those people who have college loans to pay off right. and that kind of shit, they get fired when a new yeah. party comes in, when it when it transfers from right. Democrat to Republican. So it's like, it's in their best interest, regardless of their political views, yeah. that the same party remains in office. And, and, and we should point out that it's not always, they don't always get let go. So uh, when Obama took over, he kept the defense secretary. Right. Um, he kept the CIA. I'm talking about not the big positions. I'm talking about like the oh, like, like just, paper pushing shit. Eh, but not all those people get fired either. A lot of them are just like regular everyday employees. Right. Like it's usually but the sometimes higher. Sometimes if you, you know, a new, a new yeah, higher up brings yeah, their people. Brings their people in. Right. Yes, absolutely. That, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, but, but like when you think about, again, and it's not just, her, I felt sorry for her and her life in general. Yeah. And it sounds weird that I'm saying I feel sorry for being Oh, it's life. the most arrogant you've ever been in. Oh, I love man. it. But, yeah. but it's also with the added knowledge that she's pregnant with twins. Dude, that's not easy, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. And so um, that's what, like, I, I felt profound sadness yeah. looking at her. And it was kind of weird to say that, to feel it. It's weird to, say, to yeah. look at one of the, the most successful musical artist and feel sad. of his generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, there was a sadness in it and she didn't look happy. It was, it was weird. Okay, here's the other thing I was going to ask you, which I feel like, I always feel uncomfortable marketing my uh, friendships, marketing personal my life. life. Your yeah, personal life. My personal life. There's parts of us that we all market. That's fine. Right. Like if we're doing a podcast together, at the end of this podcast, we're going to take a picture. Are we? Of course. We always take a little picture. Mm-hmm. We promote it, right? Right. Sometimes we're out in Vegas, we're doing, you know, goofy shit. It's right. kind of funny to put up there right. as content. Yeah. But like, I, I just, I never, I'm never like hanging out with either you or like, or Charlemagne or any of like, even my buddies and just out of nowhere, like, hey, let's take a picture. Let people know that we're all hanging out and being friends. So, it seems so, disingenuous. So, no, absolutely. So I, I, I was talking about this the other day. I went to dinner with some work friends yeah. and the table next to us was a group of young women. Um, and I'm, this is not a gender thing because I've seen young men do this too. Talk about these hoes. <laughs> Talk about these hoes, bro. Talk about like the whole dinner was selfies. Yeah. The entire dinner was nothing but selfies. Yeah, okay, we well, your phone. Now my phone. Now, now we're smiling. Now we got food. Now we got, like everything had to be documented. Yeah. And it's, Save now the I, I sound yeah. old as hell now, but it's just like, you know, I get it. You go to the Eiffel Tower. Hey, man, I'm at the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. But like, 
you're at CVS and you take what, like, oh, I'm sick. Got my Zycam with me though. Like they yeah. take people that you can selfies for everything. And part of it is just annoying and it's so self-centered, right? But the other part of it is like you said, in terms of going out and having fun with your friends, you don't want that experience plastered everywhere, right? Right? Like you want I our just, friendship and our fun to remain. I just don't, I just don't want to market it. That's, 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 that's what feels that's what I'm talking about. Now, I do like sharing funny things that are embarrassing. If I have an embarrassing moment for you, I'm clearly, we've Sh- I already share, fucked but, up once. I'm saying just yeah. share it to your friends, right? I'll share it with the world. Like, if if, so, if I can catch my friend, like, almost drowning. You need a haircut, by the way. You're, I you're, just got one today. Oh, you, you, you grow, you're growing Fuck it out? You and your hairline. Where's out? your confidence <laughs> telling me I need haircuts? Just because Charlamagne will rip you when you start the show like he always does. Now <laughs> you out here feeling bad for Beyonce, judging me. Hey, man. You must have got a new contract. Yeah, man. Life is, good. Life is good. Life is good. Hey, bring like that cat back out, man. Bring that cat back out. This motherfucker's feeling too hard. You don't have to do that. I'm going to be out the country in a couple months. <laughs> hey, can I ask you guys a question? Please, Adam. Uh, all right. yeah. you're, we're I feel about- bad we've been ignoring it. No, I'm going to do Adam's uh, podcast this week. Weekend, hopefully, yes, uh, and then and make sure you check out all of his stuff at uh, at No Jumper, man. You did a podcast with Tax, right? I did. Yep. So make sure you check it, check that one out for all the people. You know, Tax is locked up, so if you want to hear some Tax, free Tax, okay. free my man Tax. All right, so we're about an hour in. This is my question for you guys: What is the most respectable course of action that you could take if you were Meek Mill and Drake is out there taking selfies with your girl? Because this is a big thing. She fi- she finally, you know, they, they were... But she took one with Wayne, too, right? Right, they were all hanging out finally together. But Meek Mill, yeah. he already kind of looks hurt because he doesn't have an Instagram. He deleted the Instagram around the time of the breakup. My feeling is this. I feel like Nikki is literally the most respectful human on the planet. Mm. Like, I, I, if I meet Nikki, I will say what you did was so honorable. Sticking with him, you she, mean? Even, you know that shit was done two years ago. Or it was done probably a year and like a half she ago. Just, she, she, but she was like, look, you are going to be so clowned if I leave you. Yeah. So I'm going to let you... I'm your only leverage in the world. Every disc record is, I got Nikki, you don't. That's all right. you got, right? You have literally nothing else. Right. So I'm going to let you keep me, ride this shit out. When it and dies down, then... He, he put out, uh, was it uh, DC4? Mm-hmm. Right. Shit was fire. Mm-hmm. I've really fucked with it. He got some leverage. He's back in the game. She breaks up with him. And then she even took the picture with Drake, and she's on the side of Wayne, right? Yeah, like, like it, it wasn't even, it strategic? wasn't even, it wasn't even like a really provocative it picture. Was innocuous. That, that's, that's, that's yeah. the thing. So, again, I feel sorry for her because not everything she does is going to be scrutinized as, oh, she's trying to throw shade at Meek and like, it's yeah. just like, what are you going to do? Now, if you're Meek, because that was a question, right? what, what should Meek do? Yeah. You just got to move on and don't mention it. Don't, like someone asks, you just be like, yo, I, I hope, you know, I always like her as a friend. You know, I wish the best for her. And you just keep it moving because here's the thing. People want reactions. When you don't react, so I learned this a long time ago. The reason why, you know, Schultz and I, we could roast each other and all that stuff. It started, I'm sure it started the same way for you. A long time ago, it started when you were with your friends growing up, right? Yeah. And what did you learn really early on? Like when you react, that's when like they the keep gas, going. the yeah. gas on the fire. But when you just like, hey, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. It's not fun anymore. And that's when people move on. So if I'm meek, man, just, yeah, just let it slide. Him reacting is what makes it bad. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And don't listen to your boys. Man, you got to say something. You got to like, don't. Oh, no, dude, but that's, worst. that's what Twitter is. Twitter is oh, your boys. Oh, you going to let them say that? Oh, ooh, yeah. right? It's the that's lunchroom. Exactly. It's all that shit. It's just, ooh. And then, I mean, that's what, that's got, that got Chris Brown and Soldier Boy about to box this, just because this motherfucker pretty, said, ooh. This is the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, this is truly ridiculous. The boxing match? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, the idea that, and, and part of me is hoping that it's just, it's, all it is is, the, you know, like, oh, man, yeah. we're going to make some money off of this. Let's just play it up. Like, oh, I can't stand them. Yeah. Because if they're really about to do this, like, yo, I really want to fight him. Yeah. Like, remember when Meek Mill put the the boxing thing when he was hitting the, the bunch, the heavy bag? Yeah, he looked awful. Yeah, that's yeah. That, but that's all of them are like that, man. Oh, well, here's the thing. Chris is athletic. You know that. He is athletic. Chris yes. is athletic. But Chris is clearly going to win if it happens. He, he's athletic. But boxing is so weird. Yeah. I'm a huge boxing fan. Sometimes tall, skinny dudes are the best fucking boxers. Also, people don't know how to get punched in the face. I'm I, pretty sure he weighs a lot more than Soldier Boy, and we have he no. Does. Uh, is Soldier Boy tiny? Yeah, I think so. And I think Chris Brown's a, Chris he's Brown's a good. Tall. He's what? Look, I don't six know something. how small Soldier Boy is, but yeah. Chris Brown's like six two. Yeah. Oh, he's legit. And yeah, he was a like, dancer. That's one thing that Joe Rogan pointed out. He goes, "If you're a dancer, you're he, essentially kind of like an athlete. Yeah. You know, boxers." Well, I mean, he, he's actually, Chris 
Chris Brown could do backflips all fucking day. He's yeah, fine. and we have yeah. no reason to believe that Soldier Boy has any athletic player. ability. I don't know if that really helps no, you, yeah, he but he's ball. a really good basketball player. Soldier's five nine. Soldier's yeah. five nine. <laughs> so yeah, it might be it might be rough. Here's the thing: the person who loses in this is Rihanna, <laughs> because if Soldier Boy beats up Chris, now we're gonna look at Rihanna like, yo, yeah. You couldn't t- you couldn't handle that you know what I mean like the cat is out but you couldn't you couldn't handle that oh, shit man. like come on now it's staring me down too. yo he knows he knows so so th- so that's thing and then if and if Soldier Boy loses to Chris right now it's kind of like oh my god Chris is a professional boxer how dare he use his professional boxing skills oh, to beat the shit out of a no, woman yeah, doesn't lose in that case then Chris lo- Chris is in the lose oh lose. Chris is, Chris is Chris, in the lose you're right Chris because is in the lose, lose you lost to Soldier Boy if you win you're like you're a professional and, and boxer when beating you, women he, when people see uh, him beat this dude up it's like yo that's a dude you beat up yeah. what did you do to this poor, this poor Chris is in the lose lose Chris is in the lose lose whoever's in his, in his corner they're not Oh, They're not looking at that's out. been like that forever. Man. You know? That's that's so weird. Man, like that you got you guys deal with like you're a lot closer to that. But Charlemagne is. I don't I, I mean but you're, I'm not you're, close you're I mean you're on the periphery. I'm very peripheral about it, but yeah, you know like, I think this stuff is absolutely nonsense. I mean it, look, it's better than like saying we're gonna kill each other. Yeah, I, I sure. it's a uh, slight improvement. improvement yeah. You know what I mean? Major improvement. It's Adam going from shooting with a gun to shooting it with a crossbow. Yeah, there you go. Right? It's like harder to reload. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking of the efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plus minus for a crossbow? <laughs> you can't go out of GM mode. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break for a second pay some bills thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots what's your next move in 2017 a new job a new business venture a new hobby whatever your next move may be Squarespace is here to help you bring it to the world with Squarespace you can create a beautiful website using their all in one platform that's nothing to install, okay? Nothing to patch or upgrade, ever. Squarespace offers a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple setup. And with their award-winning template, Squarespace has the most beautiful ways to present your ideas online. Can't figure something out? Just call the 24-7 online uh, customer support. It's always available to assist you. 24-7, all right? So make your next move with a new website and a fresh domain with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter the offer code IDIOT to get 10% off your first purchase plus a free domain. That's idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, make your next move. Make your next website. Okay. Mellow. Okay, yeah. I, was, I wanted, I, when you said efficiency, I want to transition to basketball. We know we're going to get into okay. it. While we have you here, why won't any team pick up Mellow? Actually, better question. Okay. Do you think that this was Phil Jackson's plan all along? Is he this diabolical? To sabotage Mello into wanting to leave? Yeah. Absolutely. Give me something, I mean. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Because, look, Phil Jackson is not dumb. He, he may be delusional and all those sure. things. But he, look, he managed egos. That was his thing, yep. right? He was the ego manager. The reason why he won with Chicago wasn't because, like, he came up with this because a triangle all of, all, all of a sudden made the game easier for Michael Jordan. It's he got Michael Jordan to buy into something, at trusting his teammates, right? Same thing with Shaq and Kobe. He got them to trust one another, right? So to tell me that like he's going to come in and just like throw his hands up in there like, I don't know, why well, don't I just talk shit about Melo <laughs> and maybe that'll motivate him. I'm like, no, that's, that's not really his MO, right? So obviously they made a mistake when they re-signed him, right? When he was, was should he go to Chicago? They offered him all the money in the world, right? And they're regretting that mistake, right? Phyllis, Phyllis, because right. he thought at that point he could get him to play in the system. Well, not only that, but also we didn't have Porzingis. You're right. Like, Por, like Porzingis, so Porzy changed this whole thing. Absolutely, because now he's here. Like, oh, this guy, this guy is not only good, this guy's franchise level good. Like, it went from maybe in a couple of years he'll be pretty good to right now. You know, we just had this on ESPN.com plug uh, <laughs> the, the top twenty five under twenty five in the league right okay. now. What'd and, you put him at? Ah, uh, maybe like four or five. But one but, is. Well, uh, I, I can't because we all had our own thing and then did a composite. I don't composite. care about theirs. What's yours? So my one was Anthony Davis. To me, he's still number one, yeah. right? No, I, I don't it, buy it. Why not? I just don't buy There's it. There's nothing he can't do. It's too. He's too injured. His uh, bottom teeth. There's a lot of things that I'm not into. <laughs> number yeah. number two yeah. was Giannis. 
Giannis because is, because I think that whole Giannis oversized yeah. Number three, I think, was Towns. I like Towns. Number four might be Porzingis. Yeah. Number five, I want to say, who was it? Was it Jokic or someone like that? So, but anyways, so there and six was Gobert or whatever. So, um, there's like a group of guys, five deep, let's say, that definitely you see them you know it's like pornography like how do you know it i don't i don't i can't define it i know it when i see it yeah yeah five dudes that you see them them dudes are stars man yeah yeah like franchise players then after that it kind of gets into like yeah that guy's pretty good he might be even a multiple time all-star but he's For not Zingas franchise he yeah. comes in he's the franchise player mm-hmm. phil goes okay we need Melo to play a role he doesn't give up immediately, right? Well, not, he doesn't give up immediately because he goes out and gets Derrick Rose. Right. He goes out and signs Joe Kim Noah. He does all these, uh, Courtney Lee, right. Brandon Jennings. Right. So the, clearly the idea is here, like, Mel's our best player. Porzingis is up and coming. And these are vets. And we can make a big run in the East. Season starts. I think to this to date, they've beaten four teams that are above 500. Or something like that. Like, it's no matter what segment of the season you want to talk about when they won a bunch of games in December or not, they teams. just were not beating good teams, right? Okay. So Phil starts to realize this thing ain't working, right? So then you start sowing the seeds. Like you get your boy Charlie Rose in to write something. Say, I didn't say it. Charlie said it. Yeah, right, right. Uh, maybe the maybe the LeBron stuff is part of it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Whoa. I don't know. Because here's the thing. He, he has talked trash about LeBron for years, right? There's a quote that we uh, when when those comments came out the posse comments if yeah. you wonder what I'm talking about he does have a posse why is no I'm, we're not gonna go back into not that. even posse in terms of we're the not word, gonna or not, I don't, but like I'm tired like I talked about I was did like a million podcasts and things we're not fine. gonna revisit that I'm just you know say, that he is a huge crew bigger than any any NBA player in history that, no, that comes his to him not that big at home games there are 25 to 50 he's, people he's from there 50 people he's that are coming to the game that's every two vans come every and pick up all the people. Town they player. all have to kiss the ring before Every they come on. NBA player who's a hometown guy has 50 dudes at the game. Every single one of them. Every single one. So you're Dude, saying Stephon LeBron Marbury, doesn't have... Half of the arena was from Brooklyn. They've always been from Brooklyn. They work there. <laughs> okay. No, they didn't have. They didn't. They weren't clocking in when they showed up. Oh, they were. Pay- oh, they were, oh, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, yeah. that's so, why it was hard to get a hot dog because yeah. all his friends like, were taking why? off work. His lines are on. <laughs> but um, but so anyway, so uh, but what I was saying was, you know, even though he's made comments about LeBron dating all the way back to when LeBron was a rookie, yeah. Um, he, he it's like it seems so out of the blue, right? If you think about it, yeah. Why would he just start talking about LeBron out of the blue like that? So he wants him out of there. I think he's kind of nudging or whatever. And the whole thing is because you say, why why don't teams want Melo? It's like, it's not that. It's First of all, Melo's got to waive that no trade clause. And he'll do it. He'll do it if he goes to the right place. But the other thing is, Melo likes New York. He likes being in New York. Yeah. And he doesn't want to be LA. known as a dude that... It's funny. Why won't the Clippers give up Blake? But here's the funny thing. Yeah. Kevin Durant Lala wants leaves... Him. Kevin Durant leaves... And everyone says, oh, man, you're a traitor. Da, da, da. Carmelo says, I'm not leaving. I'm not abandoning ship. And everyone's like, oh, dude, you're ruining everything. No. Kevin Durant made the playoffs in the finals. The Knicks have barely made the playoffs. They made one season that he was here. The Knicks are awful. But you're not on. abandoning so a ship. Want, the him, ship is sinking because you weigh too much. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's the way it's looked at in New York. I, I'm just, Regardless if this is right or wrong. I'm right. one of the guys that goes, I'm going to give the best player on the team all the credit, and I'm going to give them all the blame. Right, so if the Knicks are playing well with Melo, I'm not giving the credit to Morzingas. Right, I'm I'm giving it to Melo. Right, right. If the Knicks are playing shitty, I'm giving it to Melo because if, I think great players, I think great players uh, raise the bar for their absolutely. entire they team. Elevate, they, they elevate, elevate the, the team. Yes. I don't think, and we've discussed this before. I don't think, um, I don't think Melo is willing to willing to do what it takes to win. That being said, I think that his skill set is unbelievable at what he does. Absolutely. You know, you, you know what Melo is? You what know what Melo is? Go. And I know you definitely appreciate this. You ever been out with like rich friends? Okay. And so you guys go and, and within your peer group, you're all equal. Yeah. We're all friends. We're all buddies. Yeah. Hey, let's go to this place. Let's go to that place. Oh, and getting drinks and stuff and yeah. meeting people. And everyone's like, oh, that's a fun group of people. Yeah. And then they begin to confuse you as one of the rich people. Like, no, 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 I'm just with them, but I'm not really one of them. Melo running with Wade, LeBron, and Chris Paul, people confuse him as a peer, and he's not. You don't think Melo's 
uh, appear with Chris Paul? No. Wow. I don't. I, I think those three guys are better player. Have been better players, pretty much their entire career. But 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 in that same vein, you hang out with your rich friends, but you may still be the funniest dude among them. Right, right, right. Right, because right, right, right. you have a skill and you're excellent at that skill. In and that's that environment, you can fit in. Right. In and the right s- environment, Mel can fit in exactly. Olympic basketball. Exactly. He, he can he even be the funniest. Exactly. He doesn't look out of place. Just that's like you don't look out right. of place when you're out with your rich friends. Right. But, but at the same time, if we're putting bank accounts against each other, like, yeah, you really aren't in this class. That's what Melo is. That's great. I, but here's my issue with Melo. I think it's a choice. Choice by who? By Melo. To stay? No, no. I don't think. I think he makes a choice not to do what those other guys do. I don't think those Ooh, other guys are wildly you think he's capable, but he's unwilling to. I do. think he's unwilling, and I don't think he's maybe self-aware enough to know it. But I think he has the physical capability. Like when I see Melo play, uh, I don't think there's maybe right now in the league a better ISO scorer. Like give Kevin me Durant. Okay, Kevin. Maybe Kevin. Yeah. Okay, but give me two points. If if I just need two points. Mm-hmm. I might even go with Melo over Durant because I think Melo draws fouls way better. So where Kevin's going to settle for a kind of maybe pull up, fall back, mm-hmm. Melo will get that little eighteen footer. He's going to get high percentage shot. I, I'll say this: Melo technically can draw fouls better, but in those situations that you're describing, he Kevin. tends to not. No, oh he does. Melo, okay, he fair tends enough. to not. In general, you're right. Right, right. In those specific situations, sure. he tends to not to. And so if I'm going to pick You go some, with Kevin. Exactly. If I'm going to pick I'll someone who's going to take an 18-foot contested shot, Kevin. I'm taking the 6'11 dude who shoots up here. You got it. Yeah. I, I, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even disagree with it. All I'll say is we're comparing Kevin to Melo right now, and it's a discussion. That's uh, how good I, Melo I, is. I, I really don't think it is a discussion. I'm, I'm willing it's, to have a discussion. It's not about absurd it. to be like, Because a, he's an elite scorer. Because okay. Carmelo is an elite an scorer. An elite scorer. Yeah. So when I see someone who is that elite at scoring the basketball, maybe the NBA 3 is a little bit far for him. You know, that, that Olympic 3 is perfect. But that NBA 3 may be a little bit far. But doesn't shoot it poorly. But an elite scorer, especially in iso ball. But he's not willing to do the things in leadership, Defense, but mostly leadership I to think, make his team well, win. I, think the I other, don't think he's a leader. Well, I think the other thing is, the other thing you got to remember is, iso ball is kind of like, it's 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 passe. And the league, the league is moving away from isolation, particularly isolation that takes too long to develop, right? So everything is quick hitter. We want if That's we, my game is iso ball, by the way. Nice, uh, long isolation. <laughs> Lull you down with a dribble. Make a quick little move. <laughs> Wait, this, you, you, you get spotted six points, and then you spot the six points back, and then... And then you end up winning. That's yeah, that's, that's for in, that's, that's the to long make it game. Interesting, but but that's that was yeah yeah. But whatever, it doesn't matter. We don't have to talk about that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, but yeah, so so Melo. That's probably his biggest flaw is that it's not that he's an isolation player. So he's an isolation player where everything grinds to a halt because he likes to catch and jab and yeah. jab and up fake. And, and the game has moved. Past. And the game the game has moved past that. Okay. Um, and, and when you look around the league. Teams are playing faster, not just faster as in fast breaks, but like in the half court. Yep. When I give you the ball, you are gone. You're trying to get right by your dude. If you can't get by him, then we're gonna move, move it. it and we're gonna we're gonna do something else somewhere else. Okay. And I think that that's that's something he hasn't adjusted to. Some people argue is because the caliber of teammate that he's had, he kind of fe- doesn't feel that trust level. But again, I look at a guy like LeBron, and he hasn't always had a great supporting cast, and he's he's found a great a leader, way. though. He's found a way. Yep. He's an unbelievable leader, especially for this generation. We've been speaking about that, about how, um, you know, Jordan and Kobe, I think. Right. Did we have this talk about, about how, like, Jordan and Kobe, I don't think... The they, brow beating, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the brow beating leadership style versus kind of like the... He's one of these teachers that has a handshake for every student. Yeah, you saw that video. Yeah, he's like, he's, that's, the that's, guy said he got it from, from LeBron. LeBron. And, and, and you're dealing with kids that have been pseudo celebrity since they're 12 years old. Yeah. Right? Kyrie is Minnesota celebrity. We're, we're talking about LeBron, not the teacher at this point. Right? Of course, yeah. I hope. Um, <laughs> but Kyrie has been a pseudo celebrity. Kevin Love has been a pseudo celebrity. Like these guys, you know, got every single girl all throughout high school, college. They've been, you know, marketed to by every single company, right. etc. So he understands you can't beat the shit out of them like a Jordan could. Well, not only that, but also just players growing up today. They're more coddled. Yeah. Like, like, it, it, but that's my point. So, it's because so, they're celebs. Right. You're, when you're celebs, yes. coddled. nobody was coddling Ron Harper, right? right? Like Jordan could say whatever the fuck he want. Tony Kukoc, yeah. like this guy grew up in what Yugoslavia. War There's to- war torn. You think if somebody goes past the ball, he's yeah. going to start crying? Yeah. No, right? So it's, you know what the funny thing is, Schultz? I talk to guys that 
used to play for us back in the day. Some of them are still playing. Some of them are like assistant coaches and stuff. Yeah. And so I'll ask them like, yo, what's it like? And they just look at me and say, you could, you could never work in this. I'm like, well, is it that bad? He's like, it's completely different. I said, give me an example. And it says, our young guys will be late to the second bus. So to, to, the to, second bus. To give you, to give you an the idea, when NBA teams go on the road, they all stay at the hotel. Yeah. And there are two buses yeah. that go to the arena before the game to go, you know, for guys to warm up and yeah. get stretch or whatever. And traditionally in the NBA, definitely if you're a rookie, but for most young players, you're expected to go on the first bus. The second bus is supposed to be for the vets. Or if you're like, for instance, Porzingis, he's a good enough player to win second bus status. Although I don't think he does. I think he's a first bus guy. Um, who tells you you can go on the second bus? It's got like, well, I mean, it's not a team thing, right? Like it's the players policing right. themselves. Right, right, right. Love it. And so um, the idea of a rookie going on the second bus is like mind bl- Like to me, I'd be like, get your ass on that. Like, it wouldn't even like, it's not even a thing. Then on top of that. So it's bad enough that you went on the second bus, but the idea that you are so late that we had to hold the bus like when they told me, I was like, "Where do they hold buses? Who, Big, who, who, who are one of these rookies that are doing this?" No, I can't tell you, man. Oh, it's like insider yeah, information. Yeah, it's insider yeah. information. But thank but, God you're not writing the ESPN insider. Yeah, anymore, exactly. So I can actually, read what you write. <laughs> but like the idea that 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 they would hold the bus for you as a as a as a rookie is just unheard of. But. You don't even have to get dressed. You wear shorts. Yeah, no, no. Every, like, there's every no there. excuse Like, for you this. can wear whatever the Your hell you sandals want. sandals and shorts. Just fucking walk onto the bus. The, the, but the crazy thing is, so I'm like, what What, it, what happens when you guys, I was like, they, they mentally collapse if you, like, a, approach them too aggressively about yeah, it. Interesting. And I don't want to paint with a broad brush. Obviously, they're different types of personalities. And what, people. what you're doing is comparing... The mental strength. I'm just saying, like, like from now what to was then. the norm? Exactly. You're not saying just, every single exactly. person, but what I'm saying, yeah. what was the norm? And I wasn't, I'm not out that long. The norm, yeah. like, maybe six years ago, yeah. is now like that's draconian. Like, the yeah. just the idea, like, what? How could yeah. you do this, such a thing? And so it's funny when a lot of the things that are happening. Like you, you, you kind of like what? What happened? And then people will tell you this is exactly what happened, and and you're just like I can't believe that. Like I got a lot of stories. I'll tell you off air, but like, yeah, thanks. Some people, yeah, thanks, you're not listeners. Gonna, you're, you're not gonna, yeah. Sorry, everybody. guys. <laughs> thanks, thanks, the quarter million people that listen to this podcast. Oh, man, that's, that was a stunt right there. You saw? <laughs> remember, remember, we were sitting there the day someone said uh, their podcast went ten times platinum, and you guys lost it. Like that doesn't even mean anything. It's like, come on <laughs> now, man. We've been ten times platinum, ten times over. Like <laughs> we don't talk about our achievements. You know, quarter million is no big deal. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just you know, platinum once a month. But that, yeah. that's not. I mean, that's really not a big deal when you think. It's about neither it. here nor there. Yeah, Twelve times a year, but whatever. I mean, that's like if you're that's like if you're actually counting these yeah. types of things. I don't really believe in counting those types of things. Okay. I mean, I wanted to ask you about the, the LeBron thing, like the whole LeBron asking for, that's like a big thing that has seeped into the national, okay. like, first of all, LeBron, the concept of LeBron asking for Set it up for though help. for people knowing. All you. right. So obviously the Cavaliers are defending champs. Yeah. Um, if you've been on Twitter at all in the last 10 months, you've definitely seen the, but don't let that distract you from the fact that the Cavaliers came from 3-1 down to beat right. the best team of all time and all that. You've seen all those memes. Um, Halloween, they have a Halloween party. They have tombstones that says 3-1 lead on it, it and graves for Curry and Clay Thompson. Yeah. They play the Warriors on Christmas Day. They're down 15. They come back, they beat the Warriors. It's a big deal. They're swagging, they're happy. And then and then January hits and they have the worst month since LeBron came back. The first time they were under 500, they go 7 and 8. They get destroyed by the Warriors on Martin Luther King Day. Um and LeBron pretty much complains about not having enough help yep and saying that uh, they need to they need a new another need playmaker, a playmaker, a playmaker. Yeah. um and so tnt's crew and as all of us we all we all commented on this and charles barkley kind of went off and said lebron is a whiner and yep. and the idea that he we say what do you want all you just won a championship and you still want more players but you want all the good players yeah and he questioned his competitive nature and so yep. LeBron responded uh, basically feeling that that was a, an attack on his character so he went at Charles character goes at Charles character by listing all the various things that 
I, I thought was common knowledge, but when you're on Twitter, you realize that people are 22 Kids years are old. 16, they don't know. They, they don't know anything. They didn't know they. Charles wasn't always the jovial, fat yeah. guy with a limp on yeah, he's, <laughs> inside the NBA. He yeah, was about that life. He was about that life in the realest way. And when I say the realest way, I mean like this. So one of the things was he threw a guy through a, a, gl a plate glass window. <laughs> and to which Charles said at the time to the judge, and he repeated this again the other day. He, the judge said, do you have any regrets? And he said, yes, I regret I wasn't on the third story instead of the first. <laughs> so when you want to see, he's about that life. He's about that he's life. He's about that life 100%. He's a country boy from Alabama yep. who, like, up until his junior, his sophomore year in college, didn't even know he was going to, thought he was going to go back and work in a factory in Leeds, Alabama. So, <laughs> like, this idea, like, oh, he's soft, like, no. Nah, nah. And so, um, basically... LeBron goes at him and then Charles comes back and, you know, kind of makes light of the whole thing saying he's not going to get personal because he's, quote, I'm not 12 years old. Charles, I don't know if you saw his quotes from that inter radio interview he did the next day. Fucking brilliant. Okay, man. I got it. Like, it's just yeah, fun. Yeah. It's funny yeah, because yeah. it's him talking shit in such a Charles Barkley way when he says, well, how do you feel about LeBron saying all those things? Well, say, well, first of all, I was so happy that he, hey, what's that thing called when you put your, your, people put your name in the computer and they kind of find out stuff about you? Yeah. And the radio host is like, Google? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm so happy that I appreciate LeBron found the time to Google about me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just so <laughs> condescending, like, it's everything that you would you're supposed to do when someone is clearly emotional, yeah, yeah. emotionally reacting. But I wanted to ask you. Sure. A, did you see the, the the real quick? Did you see the interaction between uh, Shaq and uh, Charles tonight? Yeah. When he said when he said uh, some, I, all I heard Char was Shaq, Shaq Charles goes, said, "You question his competitiveness. That's why he's upset. Right. If you question my competitiveness, I punch you in the face. I punch you in the face." And then Charles goes, "Well, you're not a very good fighter." And he just goes on with his point <laughs> after, like he didn't even pause for a reaction or anything. He just said, "You're not. I'm not concerned because you're not a good fighter." Yeah, and just went and on. With Shaq was heated. Yeah. You know, what I get annoyed that Shaq does this what? whole like. I'm going to discredit your opinion oh, on sports because you, you haven't won a championship. You, uh, you don't know what it's take. What it, that was the thing that Shaq said the other night. Yeah, so like, you, you don't, don't know what it takes to go back and back this and, then and that. It's, but the, it's like, but, Kenny but no, but is here, the luckiest man but here's, That's my on, favorite part. My favorite part is history. not that he says, you don't know what it takes. Yeah, he yeah. says, I know, Kenny knows. Kenny knows. Like, that, that's the part. But that's that's Shaq. Like, but Kenny's entire, you know, like. Oh, he'll be the first one to tell you. He would. Yeah, it'll be the first and one I'm to tell cool you. With that, and I understand his role in the show, and, it, and I, don't don't get me wrong, but it's just interesting that you know Charles is a ten times better basketball player than Kenny right. ever was. Right. Yet he is discredited because he didn't win a championship. It's just it's just yeah, no. I, I don't like when Shaq well, does I mean, it. It's juvenile, but that's but it's not but the point. That's, so the LeBron. Yeah. Thing. So the LeBron thing is first of all. Well, let me start with this. Yeah. Um. Do you? Do you agree with what he's with how he said what he said? I think we all agree they need they need maybe a backup point guard and maybe even also a backup big. But do you agree with how he went about it? Um, who LeBron? Yeah, going public. Um, here's why. Okay, here's why I'm okay with it. Okay, LeBron brings so much money to an organization. Sure, more money than any other player. Absolutely, arguably. he's the most underpaid player in the NBA. Yeah, that's yeah. a great way of looking yeah. at it. Uh, thank you for consolidating my nonsense. Go. That's why I do this for a living. I appreciate you. you. This is what happens when you don't have two hours to ramble. When you actually <laughs> got to get that shit out in like one I minute. 30 clips. seconds. There in. you go. Beautiful. He's the most under, under, uh, underpaid player in NBA history. That's including Jordan. I would disagree on that one. Just because of how much money the, the league makes now. That's yeah. why I don't But like also, it. Michael Jordan, up until like those last two years, was making like $2 million. I'm only, compa I'm only uh, comparing it to when he was doing like $60 million a year the or whatever. 30, the 30, or 30 the million. He made yeah. 30. Okay. When, he was, yeah. when he was getting his perceived value yes. at the time. Incredibly under, underpaid in terms of what he brings to the franchise, right? It's like sold out game every single yep. game. Not only his franchise, when he goes on the road, on the, road yeah. the games sell out. By the way, that, that was the Jordan effect. When, when he was in Washington... They, they're the only team... That sold out Washington. That, they, that sold out every other arena. So, in my personal opinion, and I know maybe it's not like the classic, you know, be a good athlete and right. behave as you're supposed to away, but I think someone who, in a free market, brings that much to a franchise, gets more leeway with a sure. franchise. Absolutely. So, and, that, yeah. that's, so that's, a, that's an excellent point. So, I was trying to explain this to somebody today who said, oh, LeBron... Real quick, I don't know if that... I don't know if that lends itself... 
to success, though, sure, because, that would be my only issue. Does undermining the franchise cause your players to respect the franchise franchise less, and then cause a rift between franchise right. and personnel? I don't know if how that works. But, do I understand why he feels he can do that? Yeah, because he feels he's ta- being taken advantage that's, of. That's what people people who don't understand how this works. Like he is the most powerful man in the NBA, really. Of course, right? Like it's, that's what these old school guys don't like. That's what Phil doesn't like. Leverage. That's what Riley don't like. The, the idea of a player bigger than a coach, bigger than the bigger than GM, and bigger than the owner, and bigger than the commissioner. The fucking commissioner. Like that's that's a scary thought. Although, once again, I would argue that Michael Jordan was that, but. LeBron is flexing that power in a way that Michael really never did. Because he didn't have the ability to. He can't just go on Twitter. Michael didn't have Twitter. You know what I mean? And and the the relationship between the media and players is a lot different than it is now. There's not 40 people that immediately when you say something are spinning it into memes and tweets, etc. So, but anyways, so, but having said that, just because you have the power to do so doesn't always mean it's the right idea, right? Right, and so that that's that was my. So, take what on do it. you think coming? Because for people who don't know, you used to be an executive yep. at a at an NBA team, the right. Phoenix Suns. Yep, right, a horrible one, but you're still. We were good when I was there. I mean, you know, they, look, look, you didn't go back to back. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I know exactly. You know, I don't know if you I think you have what it takes. Yeah. Okay, no, no, I tease, but in all in all seriousness, what do you think that? What do you think the effects of that are on on the franchise? Does it put enough pressure? Does it light the fire? No. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. What it does when it, it now, if he did it behind closed doors, hell yeah, it lights the fire, right? Okay. You, if you go in there, you can, and and it, the other issue you brought up, how does that affect how other people in the organization perceive different levels? Sure, that is that is a risk. But at the very least, this, at the very least, this is all internal, right? Okay. If I motherfuck my GM and motherfuck my owners to give me some help, I tell you guys, give me some help. Yeah. You don't give me some help. There's gonna be some problem. Da da da. Yeah. Yes, that lights fire. The moment you say that to the outside world, what ends up happening is it's like uh, when there's an earthquake about to hit here, right? Everyone goes to the supermarkets and buys pallets of water, right? Once the earthquake hits, like the water goes up, like the price, the price gouging happens. Yeah. Same thing, you know, with surge pricing. The yeah. Surge pricing, right? So when you announce that to the world, everyone who's selling water is like, oh, <laughs> this dollar water is going to cost you 30 now, right? Point guards just got expensive. Absolutely. If you're on the trade market, at least, which is why they have to have that little mini workout with dudes that nobody wants. Because everybody's asking for a lot. So asking it's... for too much because they know. And, and when he says it, it's so powerful it's because, brilliant. again, he's the most powerful man in the NBA. The most powerful man in the NBA just said they need a point guard. Well, that means they're ready to pay through the nose for a point guard. And so that was the thing. Do now, they need a point guard? Are they missing Della de Vadova? They are in a sense that not because he's so amazing, but it, they just need someone to play minutes who can run the team, right? Because without LeBron, they fall apart. Because the whole idea, not only that, but also LeBron's averaging more minutes than anyone in the NBA this year, which is the really? op- yeah, he's leading the league in minutes played, which is the opposite of what they said they wanted moving in. Is like, oh, this year we're going to try to play him even less, right? And Kyrie's up there in minutes as well, and so it's not even them lacking in playmaking so much as look, I just need a break, man. I need who, a breather. Who isn't stepping it up? Or is it that JR's out? Like JR's out, and then like the next playmaker after that is Keith Felder, who's a rookie, right? So they just don't trust him, or what? Yeah, well, LeBron doesn't trust him. Why? Yeah, because he's a rookie, which is weird. Because LeBron, when he brought up, we got McCray and we got Keith Felder, and those guys aren't ready to play these kind of minutes because you know they're not ready for this stage. And then he points to the Spurs as a team that has bodies. It was funny because he lost to a Spurs team that started a rookie at point guard that night. Who? DeJounte Murray, the kid from uh, from Washington. He's a rookie. Oh, Murray's on the Spurs? DeJounte Murray, yeah. I thought that his... I saw him play in the D-League. I didn't know he was on the Spurs team. I, I he might have he had an assignment down there. He might have he gone down and came back up. No, but I saw him at uh, Summer League. Yeah. Because Murray was the kid who played a prep school year, mm-hmm. like an extra prep school year, and then came right here. He didn't go into college. No, right? he did. He went to Washington. You're thinking about someone else. Who's the guy? He's from Washington or like Seattle. He's like a scorer, like long... I mean, that sounds like Murray, but, but yeah, he, went, he, Murray. he went to Washington. Though. And he's, but he's from Seattle originally, and then I he went to so. school. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's the same guy that so I'm anyway, thinking of. So anyways, but yeah, so he's... Good score, shooter. Yeah, so but, but he's, he's a rookie, and he's a low... a low. He's a first-rounder, but he's a low first-rounder, right. right? He's a guy, like, toward the end of the first round. And so it's like LeBron, and the irony is, if they were flip-flop, 
and Keith Elder started for the Spurs and DeJounte Murray were playing for the Cavs, LeBron would complain that Murray's not ready, but the Spurs got all these dudes Well, Keith right. Elder, rookie, was starting. So the, the point is, like, there's a little bit of hypocrisy in what he's saying. Yeah. There's also an element of when J.R. Smith was a free agent, what did LeBron do? What did LeBron say to manage? Oh, he said, sign that motherfucker. Right. No matter what it costs, yeah. right? Same and with Thompson. Tristan Thompson was a free yeah, agent, what did he say? sign that motherfucker. And when Iman Shumpert was a free agent, what did he say? Sign that motherfucker. All right. So what happens is you got all these dudes who, who got signed to huge deals. makes it hard for them to make trades now. Now, two things. My first in instinct is to say... Maybe LeBron is just pissed off that he's not getting paid what he knows he's deserved. So he's like, I'm going to hit them in their wallet. Oh. My second instinct is you better be loyal to daddy talking to the other players because daddy got you more money. Yeah. Please um, believe that when I say I want to sign him. Well, Tristan came out and said, he didn't get me my money. I got me my money. You saw, you didn't see that Tristan Thompson quote? No. He said, I didn't get my money because LeBron. I got my money because I earned it. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Tristan earned it. Especially with the new CBA, you're getting sure, him for sure, twenty million sure, a year. Sure, like, sure. if he waited two years, sure, he'd be getting sure. But we know why he got the amount he got. Sure, sure, fair enough. Right. But what I'm saying is, it wasn't a horrible deal yeah, for no, the no, Cavs. It's, not horrible. it's yeah. not a horrible deal. I'm just saying, like, you, you can't like he ain't nothing to do with it, right? Because you weren't looking that hot before he got to Cleveland. That's that's one part of it, of course. And then the course. other part of it is obviously him saying, "Hey, get this thing done." But anyways, so that's all a long way to come back to LeBron's response to Charles, which is all these personal attacks or whatever. But the irony is he missed the most obvious way to hit Charles back for his comments. Which was? Charles Barkley demanded to get traded from a crappy Philadelphia team and gave the Philadelphia front office a list of teams. And there were like three to five teams on them. And Phoenix was one of them. And Phoenix had won 50 games and been to the conference finals and had... Tom Chambers is an all-star and KJ is an all-star. Yo, other than being a free agent versus being a trade, it's the same exact situation as LeBron. It's a dude who demanded to go somewhere else yeah, yeah. because his team wasn't good enough. Instead of demanding people to come to you. Well, That's I mean, really interesting. You're, you're looked at as whiny when you demand people to come to you. When you demand people to go to something, you want to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or spoiled that you right. want these good players. The, yeah. the thing that he did bring up that I was glad that he brought up was the thing about, he said, they call me, they say, oh, I'm too friendly and all that. He said, but him and Michael Jordan were laughing in the middle of the finals in a game while some dude shooting free throws. Which is true. They joked around and because those, those, that was his boys and stuff. Yeah. So it's just like I wish all his criticism were like that. Like, oh, you want to talk about basketball careers and what? Who yeah, did? But you're what? asking him. You're asking him and like the people around him to be. But you know, he to do what they don't do. This was this was pre written. This wasn't no off the dome, right? Oh, that's what I'm saying. But the people around him and himself that are that are devising this comeback scheme, that's not what they do for a living. This is what we do for a living. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we know how to sit down, <laughs> look up facts. <laughs> we look up facts and we like think about like you know when I know that I'm going to come here and I'm going to talk to you about this band, yeah. I want to have as much perspective right. as I can, and so I can at least talk to you intellectually about it. If not, I have to sit here and I ha just have to take everything you say as gospel because yeah. you're going through it. I'm not. Right. 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 Or you're going through in a different way yes, yes. than, than I am, so to say. So it's like, so the guys that he's dealing with, they might be good at, you know, signing deals for Nike, this, that, the other, but come on, bro. This is the clapback game. This, is not this shit talk is different, bro. <laughs> this is, there's an art to this shit. You know, you watch that, uh, that Jeff Frost roast session thing on comedy central. No, I've watched it and I'm, I'm kind of, I saw of, the greatest episode ever of that live. It wasn't an episode. I saw okay. the greatest roast that Jeff was at. I've, yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I wish I have a phone. There was one guy who had cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and then another guy who was just was like regular looking. Right. And, uh, the guy who was regular looking said, um, uh, he said, uh, to the guy with cerebral palsy, you know what that is, where they're all yeah, like, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. in the chair. He was in a, he was in a chair, yeah. I think he could barely walk. And he goes, um, he goes, you, your legs look like they were drawn by your hands. <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes, you look like someone put your body in a blender. No, no. He goes, what is that thing? Those, the Haitian voodoo dolls. Yeah. He looks, he goes, it looks like someone put your voodoo doll in a blender. Oh, man. Bro, it was brutal, but it was the most hilarious but here, thing I've ever here's, seen. So I'm glad that you went to a tape, but you didn't see, you didn't see what the finished product was like. 
Uh, I've I've seen them before, but why? What's up? Because uh, I'm su- kind of surprised when I watch them. I haven't been the live one, but I've watched yeah. them. I'm kind of surprised, like how tame, or not even tame, kind of like really sometimes corny. It's a TV, lot of yeah. them are, but I'm like, is it because they edited out all the good ones because they were just too far across the line, or or it's is all, it just, or are these people not good at this, or? At this particular thing, obviously, they're comedians. It, it is TV. It has nothing to do with it. I've seen... I go to the ones that are live, and it, there's one at New York Comedy Club in the city. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's, there's a funny little backstory about this whole thing, but we don't have to get into that. But, uh, but, and the live ones are... It's really interesting, but you kind of need to know the people for it to be really good. Like you need to have a personal relationship with right. them to get their nuances. Because, uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're just making fun of the way their face looks, yeah. or if they're fat, if they're black, if they're Asian. Like it well, just it becomes like some these of jokes. Are doing some homework? Oh, they're all doing homework, and people work really hard on this. Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, is it my cup of tea? No. You know, like you know, with, with what I. But is it good to promote stand-ups? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like anything stand-ups can do to get out there, I want them to do. It, it, do I? Like when I'm developing material and thinking about like ideas and shit like that, it's not to just make fun of your sh- you know shirt or whatever like that. But some of these guys are really really skilled writers and um, gives them a platform, so I'm supportive. It's, that's the other thing. Was, you hate it. Well, no, it's just like uh, I was just kind of like I let I got because you know Jeff Ross. I love Jeff Ross. Right. He's really funny, and it's not just when he roasts people. His, his I think his stand up is. I I think he's funny. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I enjoy his work, but. It just seemed like really, really kind of not even vanilla. It's just like it's TV, bro. Faint chuckle. Kind of, um, it's TV. You know. It's also in really small clubs, so the, the the audience is small, so they don't respond as much. So then you start thinking, oh, nah, this is not man. as fun. Like you know, like the one dude called the other dude a, a lesbian. Like, like oh yeah, it's basically it's just, you, that's corn. That like that's like the kind of joke that if we would make like among friends, like, boo, boo, like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. your friends would never accept that. Listen, but, we have high bar roasters. Okay, <laughs> we come from a very high bar of criticism, and um, you know it might be different. I would watch the finals. The guys who go to the finals, yeah. and I'm sure they'll be the same guys more or less every year. There's a few guys that are just really just great at crafting roast jokes. This kid named uh, Mike Lawrence, mm-hmm. uh, another kid named uh, Zach. Miko. Um, Yo, let me ask you something. Yeah. One of the things, so like I said, I just got done taping this thing. And you know, I, we don't tape the shit that we do yeah. live, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, for me, it's a lot easier to do live because it's like. It's a reaction. Not, what's up? It's a reaction. Well, it's not even a reaction. Yeah, it's a rea- It's a, a, a true reaction. Yeah. A true reaction of a stimulus and you're giving it out and you could throw the one liner and the ones that you miss, you miss, and you're like, all right, that one's gone forever. Um, the taping thing, man, boy, that's hard, man. Why? What happened? Like well, just doing it over again? Just doing it over again, and like when you, do, for me, when I do it over again, it's never as good as that first one. Course, yeah. And so, and then like they're doing the jokes, and you've heard the joke like eight times, and like it was really funny the first time. Yeah. And the eight times, do I still react and laugh? Do I just kind of like speech them? Like it's really hard. And so I was thinking to myself. And by the way, this is in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, when you're doing stand-up, is this what you're going through? Like, No, because you... I won't repeat it over and over again. Oh, wait, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm saying on a night when you're doing, what's the most? You do two shows or three shows? Oh, I'm you doing do three shows I mean, you do night, six right? shows a night in the city. Okay. So but it's a new audience every time. Uh, it was a new so audience it's... for us as well. Oh, and it still felt stale. It's just, it's, uh, because, yeah. uh, not for them. Here we go. Ready? To, to their credit, they look good. I'll be doing... You know, I'll do, let's say I'll do five shows a week. And if I go to a, a city, right, I'll do a Thursday night, two Friday, two Saturday. Yeah. By the second shows, maybe Saturday, there'll be times where I'll just riff half the right. show because I feel like I'm lying to the waiters in the, in the place. Like you feel bad for the way. I feel like not, not that I feel bad for that. They have to hear it. I feel like I'm lying to them. Like, like I feel like they saw the magic trick already. I feel like they're standing behind the table that the magician is hiding the quarter under, you know, and they're they're sitting there. Watch this. He's about to, you know, it's like, they already know the trick that I'm going to do. Now I try to make sure my comedy is the least bit tricky, but you still are seeing these people who, you know, you've been with through, you know, the last Mm -hmm. couple of days, they've seen this act. So for me, I have to switch it up to keep it interesting. Because I feel disingenuous. Right. For me, I'd like to be like a like a witch hazel, or not with like a snake oil salesman. Yeah. You know, just go down the Mississippi, stop in a town one night, sell it all, yeah. keep it moving, and then then you're literally 
like a, like you're literally a genius, right? Yeah. It's like, did he make the whole thing up? Right. What the, you, you come yeah, exactly. back in a year? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. You know, but unfortunately, you need that. You need to do those reps, bro. That scratch. You do that scratch, dude. Thank you so much for coming and um, you know braving this this cat. Um, listen, if you listen to this podcast and. Um, you think that that a mean should have citizenship or a green card? Contact him, okay? No, don't contact me. Contact contact your congressman. Contact, contact your, your do that local too. Local elected government official. Do that too. And f- this is real quick, just to let everybody know. I think one good thing about Trump being president is people will start to understand how government works in America. <laughs> Let's hope he's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get a rude awakening too. And I, what I, what I mean by that is like. Hey, by the way, I, he said it. I didn't. Don't don't you feel like all Americans are kind of like becoming aware of how the government works in a much more intimate way over yeah, the past week? It's but, crazy. But this is but this is good. Like like for example, there was there are systems put in place to limit the power of Trump. Right. In 1870 mm. or 1877, or I guess, no, sorry, 1776, we, 17, maybe like 83, when we start to have this idea of what America is and like mm-hmm. the real constitution, when our founding fathers put it together, right? And they did the limitations of power to each branch, right? So, for example, you could put federal legislation out there, right? But the states, have to enforce yeah. this legislation. What is, what, that's that's what, like marijuana. Exactly, exactly, right? So what people don't understand is just because the government makes it illegal, the states can decide to say, well, fuck it, we're, we're going to actually not make it illegal at which all. Is, which is what happened in Massachusetts, right? The, like the governor said, we're not... We're, we're not, not going to abide by these yeah. rules with the refugees and we're going to let people in, right? So... The, the reality of the matter is the, the way that our government functions is the federal government just makes it. Now, they can go in there. You can put the feds, the FBI, and send them to fucking Massachusetts or send them to California, but you can't send them to every single state at the same time. There's just not enough people, right? So what you've seen right now is certain states, um, a state attorney generals, like the state attorney general of California, just recently decriminalized street vendors, Right. And the reason he did that is because he's like, I don't want them to get caught up in a massive deportation if Trump tries to do that. So I'm going to make the thing that they do that's illegal and puts them uh, out there, puts it at risk to get arrested. I'm going to make that more or less legal. So now you wouldn't get arrested in the first place. And every state can find a way to manipulate their laws and decide to not criminalize their shit. Marijuana is legal in the state of California. An FBI agent can walk right in here and arrest us if yeah. there's weed in the store, or walk right into the DEA. Pounds. Yeah, the DEA. Well, I mean, they, they've said that before that, that you know the DEA has absolutely uh, threatened to come in and shut down things. But you know, it's, that's what I'm saying. So people know. will start to learn that you stop freaking out just because Trump signs some order or does this doesn't mean the states will go along with it. And if you don't like what's going on in your state, move to another fucking state. But, uh, but again, uh, like. I want to say that I'm glad people are freaking out because, again, it's not just to let your locally elected officials know or even Trump know or whatever, yeah. but I think it's really important for the world to see that this isn't like... Because this you, is an all-American. You travel a lot. You yes. travel internationally a lot. You yeah. know how it is. Mm-hmm. People think Americans are all stupid. Yeah. And it's important for there ha- there to be an at least even if it's a, a fictitious image, an image of an America that's not stupid. Absolutely, and I think it's important that there that the the world sees that Muslims around the world see that refugees around the world see that there are still Americans that believe in American ideals, yep. which is hey, we're going to accept you no matter what, right. and we're going to try to do whatever we can. And to And especially help you. if you're if you're fleeing from persecution, and so, I mean, it's just it's weird to me because especially that. when you talk about restriction of travel, when you talk about uh, you know they, he's got another executive order that has to do with religious freedoms, you could call it religious freedoms, but it's basically uh, sanctioning kind of. Christianity-centric type of ideals or whatever. Yeah, uh, you've got um, within the Refugee Act. No, no, this is a completely okay. different thing. Completely, there's, there's like kind of stuff like if I don't want gay people to work for me, then because it violates my my religious uh, freedoms. Religion. Yeah, or um, uh, when you talk about you know my my feeling on that, by the way, about the whole cupcake shit. Like, if you're a bakery, you don't want to sell cupcakes to a gay gay people. My feeling is like you should be allowed to not sell them. 
because I have confidence that once people find out they that want, you're the like cupcake the Chick-fil-A place, thing. you're basically the Chick Fil A thing, right? Now Chick Fil A is so They're good that people yeah, yeah. are going to go. That's regardless. what I'm The problem is the cupcakes are pretty. The exactly. cupcakes are good, but enough. then you need to make the cupcakes that good. Like that's yeah. just going to promote business. Like how much do you want? How much do you believe in hating gays enough to make cupcakes the best cupcakes <laughs> in the world? <laughs> you know what I mean? so enough silly. for gays to be like, all right, I'm not going to be gay anymore. <laughs> Those are some good ass cupcakes. But uh, but, but yeah, you, so, but you know but, what I'm saying? Yeah, like let's out the bigots. Let's find out who the fuck they are. That's true. I mean, and that's another. That's another thing. Like again, like this is trying to find the silver linings, right? All these things, we're finding out who's really about that life, so yeah. to speak, and who's like, no, no, no. like, because that's what I keep saying throughout this is for the people who are, are supportive of a lot of these measures. Another thing I was saying was the reopening of black op sites. Yep, that's where they do torture and stuff. Shit, you know all about it. Right yeah. across the street from your house, growing exactly. up. Exactly. So well, that's that's the thing I was. They getting think to. I'm joking. If yeah. you've listened Go to this past episode, that I mean, grew up uh, across the street from a uh, from a, a tor- safe house or a torture yeah, house. A torture okay. house. Yeah. yeah, a Sudanese torture house, not a CIA torture house. Right. But but not that different. So yeah, pretty much. But but the, that's the point is, these are all things that remind me of Sudan. Like all of these things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Very remind me of Sudan and, and the story. I don't. I don't know if I told this story. Did I ever tell a story about when I first came back to America when I was fourteen? I think the, my first day back, um, we we're waiting in line at passport control mm-hmm. at JFK, and the two passport control guys were talking to each other. And one turns to the other and says, "Hey, man, what you gonna do with your tax refund?" And the guy who's in front of me who was basically handling our stuff. Looks at, I didn't get one this year. So yeah, I guess I got to send Uncle Billy a thank you card. And they both laugh, ha ha ha. And, I, and it took me the same way. He saw my Bill Clinton. This dude saw my the president of the United States that way. And then I turned around, Schultz, I shit you not. I turned around and I started looking for secret police to come grab him and take him away. Like, honestly, not like, yeah, where usually this is where they come in. Like, the fear in my heart came up, like, oh man, it's about to go down. We're in an airport, which is like basically government central. And then like, nothing happened. And it took me a while to figure out, like, yo, that's not how it rolls over here. And it's not like I was, like, not speaking English. And, you know, I, I grew up in America up yeah. until I was eight. So I'm pretty much like I am now. He was just saying he made enough money. What's up? He made enough money. He's, he's, he's No, he's saying he didn't get a tax refund because, like, they, uh, it was some tax break that Clinton got rid of or something like that. Oh, okay. But yeah, he was saying, some, basically, I didn't get a tax refund this year because of the president. Yeah. He said, oh, I guess I got to send him a thank you card, like, sarcastically. Oh. Like, sarcastically shitting on the president okay. for making oh, my life and harder. You're like, and they're like, how can you shit on the president? Like, I'm thinking, how can you shit on the president? Yeah. And so... In 2017, like, from I look back, I used to look back and I was like, yo, how fucking hit dog hollow was I, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, beaten to the point where, like, this this fear was in me. And now I look back, and now it's 2017, and I hear things like, they check your social media, and they want to see if you said anything bad about the president. And, like, it, it's just, that's not America, man. Like, I don't care w- sure. what which way you vote. That is... That is not America, yep. and that, and so again, all the people who are making a big fuss about this. As a Muslim, as a Sudanese guy, I'm appreciative of those people because they they have you guys have the most powerful thing in the world, which is the Bill of Rights that allows you to say these things to go sure. shut down JFK and LAX Absolutely. and all these airports. Exercise them, use them. Because I can't, I couldn't do that in my country. Yeah, and I damn sure can't do it here. <laughs> Um, so it's just, it's, it's one of those things where I'm kind of relying on America to be America. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, I, I say the same thing whenever you, if you're one of those people that's listening to this, yeah, they're all dangerous and we need to bet them whatever. Just yeah. remember like what I said earlier, I'm on TV every week, man. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, Tracy McGrady, Chauncey, Bill, like these are, yeah. these are personal friends of mine. Yeah. Right. I, I am, I would be a victim of this if I left. And if you're familiar with me, then you know, like, that's kind of crazy, right? And sure. if you're not familiar with me, Google me, you'll find out, like. Sure. I There's mean, a lot of people who you shit on their teams and they want you sent back. I always think about, you know, I swear to God. <laughs> like, I swear to God. First Remember time. When you, when you I hope they send that guy back. Say, why, why haven't you gotten a green card yet? Yeah, yeah. I always think, like, what if the dude was just like. TJ McConnell was hoping yeah. that you'd be sent back. TJ McConnell's mom works for USCIS. He's like, just rubber stamp, like, whoa. Not Finally. Get out of yeah. here, you bum. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming on to me and I really appreciate you. Adam, thank you so much for having me. 
having oh, us. Thanks, man. Adam. My uh, pleasure, man. This I really is appreciate it. I love the live uh, the live podcast experience. It was great. Well, thank you for doing it. We'll de- we'll definitely do it up this weekend. Check Let's out Adam's it. podcast, No Jumper. Um, Shout out to Robesman, other studio audience member. Oh, yeah. Yes, thank you for coming out, man. Appreciate it oh, for sure. Um, and uh, and again, you know, if you if you thought that this uh, you thought that this this podcast was eye opening, was uh, at all intellectual, um, was uh, surprising, and changed your worldview. You, you know, you're right. If you thought that we're absolute bozos, um, just fucking morons, uh, that that a mean should should be sent back to a different country in Africa, not even Sudan, but a different that, one. That's, act, should... that's actually an upgrade. So if you guys are going to kick me out, I'm all right with that. I got a short list. No, I, I want you out, but I want to pick where you're going. All right. That's what it is. You don't get the luxury the, the to worst choose your you, trade. The okay? worst thing you could do is send me back to Sudan. Specifically. Okay. So basically if you feel that way, you might be right.